I will now call the regular meeting of the Niles Manning District Library Board of Trustees to order. It is 7 p.m. on Wednesday, February 19, 2020. Diane, please take the roll. Karen, here. Carolyn, here. Diane, here. Patty, here. Linda gave previous notice she made the Tim Spadoni. Here. And so, here. Uh, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Before we get started, I have a couple of clarifications from last meeting that I just wanted to make to the board and to the viewing public, uh, just to uh, as I said, clarify a couple of things. Uh, we had a resident who warned us not to use special reserve funds for uh, sandwich trays. And I just want to make it clear to everybody that the board, neither the board uh, or anybody, or any of the trustees or the library have never used special reserves for that. It is solely for the use of large-scale items, uh, capital expenditures, and whatnot. So and just in case it was uh, unclear on that. Also, it was suggested that I, as the president, had an obligation to second a motion. And per our bylaws and uh, board procedures, the only obligation that any office holder has uh, on a motion uh, is the same as any other trustee, as far as making a motion, seconding a motion, uh, discussing it or voting on it. So there's no special obligation that any officer holds as far as motions are concerned. Okay. Can I just clarify because that is what I said and I know you're responding to my comment. <clears throat> I didn't say you were obligated. I just said as president. Yes. And as a trustee yes. of this board, since we're about transparency and yes. doing what's best for the public, that you may want to second that motion to have conversation. Yes. Well, you said specifically, that yes, I hear you said, again, you just said, as president, I just want to make it clear that according to our bylaws and our procedures, no office holder has any obligation on a motion. It's not an obligation. Carolyn? It's a position. All right. All right. We're done talking about it. Up, 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 please. Taxpayer. We're done. If you have any, any clarifications or any changes on the no, bylaws. No, I'm good. Okay. Other than that, that's what our, our bylaws say. Okay, uh, let's uh, get going with the meeting. We have rearranged our meeting agenda a little so that people wanting to make public comments can do so without waiting. Since we have a guest tonight, uh, has anyone registered? And I see uh, Mr. Bakula has. Ready? Yeah, I am ready. Okay. We are all ready. Um, I'm here to talk about the roof inspection that you had on uh, uh, December 5th, 2019. This is with the third inspection, I think. Uh, the company was AJW Solutions, 1700 Alexandria Court, Wanaki, Wisconsin, 145 miles from here. That address is a uh, residence on a cul-de-sac. If you check the internet, there's no such company in this Wanaki, Wisconsin, or in Wisconsin whatsoever. Um, I, I don't know where we found this. this uh, inspection uh, company um, his, his uh, some of the information he has contradicts what we previously had he seems to indicate that we need a roof right away our previous inspection showed that one of the roofs was good for 10 years one was good to look at it in five years and the third roof needed um, maybe replacement in three years and uh, it's not not the same uh, he was paid $3,250. Now, the Better Business Bureau lists 369 accredited roof consultants in Cook County. Now, we couldn't get one in Cook County that's accredited. We got somebody that doesn't even have a business, isn't registered, and is 140 miles away. Uh, this this kind of, something's wrong here. Uh, it looks like a, a hypochondriac shopping for a, for a cure for trying to find an illness. Uh, let's and, not and, uh, disparage any of their staff, please. Okay, well, that, this is what it looks like to me. Well, yes, but we're going to respect their staff. Okay. All right. Thank you. So, <clears throat> I, I would suggest that the board have some oversight and see why did we pick somebody so distant that's not not registered, with, in, not even in Cook County, 
and has no accreditation in this area. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, we have a special guest here tonight, uh, Sarah Keister Armstrong, who is here to answer our questions about our strategic planning proposal. Uh, welcome, Sarah. And I want to remind everyone that the proposal is on page 55 of our. Working with libraries as a trustee at my hometown library in Lake County, so I understand the perspective you're coming from. Um, and I've also been uh, grateful for the opportunity to serve both on the Rails Board and the ILA Executive Board. Um, so uh, this project, uh, the, the way it's been proposed has been in, in two phases. The first would be uh, stakeholder engagement, and the second is actually updating the strategic plan that you put together in 2017. Um, the way that we are proposing doing this is slightly different than how you've done it in the past. We're trying to focus on reaching segments of the population that perhaps have not been as engaged with the library or um, who might not have participated as heavily as we would have liked the last time around. Um, so you can see it's split into a few different areas uh, of stakeholder engagement. First are these community conversations. Um, <coughs> This is something the library's community engagement team has been interested in, really going out and talking to people where they are. Um, a lot of boards now are very interested in getting feedback from uh, non-users, people who don't use library at all, or infrequent users, people you know who work here maybe once or twice a year, but don't fully take advantage of all you have to offer. So um, doing these in informal conversations is uh, a way to organically get feedback about what community members think of the library. Uh, one of the examples uh, where these could take place is a uh, national night out. So that would be a community event where there would be people who use the library, people who don't use the library, um, but a place where a lot of feedback could be obtained in a natural way. So our role in that part of the project would be helping to um, facilitate that work by providing a structure of how to synthesize the data once the community engagement staff have had those conversations. Uh, so it would be important to get that input back and uh, analyze it in a way that would help you develop goals for the future. Um, additional ways that we would like to get feedback from the community are uh, stakeholder focus groups. And I know you did focus groups uh, the last time with community members. These focus groups would be uh, with leaders of your community, so the local business community, um, representatives from schools, uh, municipal organizations like parks, um, that kind of thing, as well as nonprofit organizations or service organizations that would that would be able to reach some of these uh, segments of the population that uh, the library might be interested in hearing from. Uh, those focus groups uh, are conducted in, in kind of an in, informal conversational format. Um, as important as it is for a facilitator to ask questions, a lot of valuable feedback comes from how participants start interacting with each other, especially when you have groups of community leaders. Um, so that's why we thought that would, that would result in some meaningful feedback for you. Um, the next two items are surveys. Uh, the first is a community survey similar to what you've done in the past, um, but again, really uh, thinking strategically about how to market the survey so you're not just in an echo chamber getting feedback from the people who love you the most. So uh, to maximize the reach to these non-infrequent users, we wanted to disseminate the survey a few different ways. First. Um, online, sending it through an email blast on social media is extremely cost effective, it's easily shared, um, providing print copies, but also uh, looping in some of these community organizations and seeing if, if they would be able to share with their network so that we could get a broad cross-section of the community. Um, and then the last piece of this is a survey of library staff. Um, I um, and enthusiastic in involving staff in strategic planning projects. I think uh, they have uh, a, a unique perspective of how people use the library and how they don't use the library, as well as what 
uh, needs in the community might be unmet that the library might be able to uh, fill a role in, uh, but also getting their buy-in and feedback throughout the process is important for the strategic plan to be effective, right, because they're going to be the ones implementing it. Um, so uh, I, we proposed a survey of library staff to give everyone a chance to provide feedback. Um, I found that that has been a way to get input from, you know, part-time to full-time um, without having to rely on a single focus group session to get staff feedback. Uh, from there, all of that information will be compiled into a report and presented to you. And then we would start the second phase of updating the plan that you have in place right now. So seeing, uh, are you in sync with what the community is telling you? Um, if not, how can, we, how can we guide the goals and strategies moving forward to really be responsive to the community you're serving? I'm happy to answer any questions. Karen? Well, um, yeah, could you can just, just to tick off the ways that you're going to solicit feedback, you're going to send an email to our usual contacts, put the surveys on websites, uh, on social media websites. I had a question about that. I don't know what the likely response is to expect from that. Is there any statistics like you put a survey on social media, how likely people are to respond? Um, there's not any reliable statistic because it would depend on so many factors. I found the most successful is if um, the library chooses to offer an incentive like a $25 gift card and posting that on Facebook, it boosts interest in it and uh, the ability for people to share it is important. Um, also, posting in local groups, whether it's a mom's group or a PTO, that kind of thing, that's where social media can really play a role if you are strategic in how you're marketing it. Um, but as far as just throwing a link out on Twitter, no, that, that wouldn't get you the impact that we're trying to have. Okay. So, and then you're also planning on making the physical copies of the service course here in the library, but you're making them available to schools and community organizations, but it would be up to them to distribute them, is that correct? Yeah, I, I mean, it depends on the community. Side. So um, schools tend to now be distributing information electronically, electronically through virtual backpacks or electronic bulletin boards or things like that. So it's most likely that if a school is willing to disseminate the survey, sharing a link in a school newsletter or a PTO newsletter, that kind of thing. <coughs> The paper copies are really, if someone's in the library, um, I never want to alienate someone who either doesn't want to use a computer or isn't comfortable using a computer. Um, but the primary manner of sharing it would be electronic. Can I ask yeah. So uh, if, so that would be a link to our survey? Oh, okay. Yeah. So it wouldn't be a, an internal link for their systems? No, just a link to the same service, yeah. So everything would be. This new technology, place. I don't know. <laughs> it works. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha, sorry. No, go ahead. Yeah. I have a question. Sure. Who, who does the legwork on finding out who's uh, who are the important community groups, mm -hmm. who are the contacts, following up with those contacts, um, making sure that things are objective and you know, I mean, if something is just handed out in the library, it goes over a library website, it's like these are the people that use the library, so. I, it's hard to imagine getting really accurate community input if there's not a, a huge outreach that goes outside of the scope of the library. So how do you do that? Sure, so a couple different things. Um, first, the great benefit to doing an online survey is that you can monitor it in real time. So we would definitely have a question that looks at how often someone's using the library. And during the open survey period, if we see that the only people answering it are the ones who are here every week, then we need to readjust our strategy. As far as the legwork, I like to do as much of that as the library is comfortable with. Um, I know strategic planning projects can be very time intensive on staff and I want to avoid that. So everything from inputting the paper copies of the surveys to contacting people for focus groups, I like to take on as much of that as um, you're willing. So um, as far as, you know, we're happy to do local press releases, a lot of times local press will run something if you're offering, you know, a prize for answering the survey. Um, 
uh, the only thing that would not be great on our end to do would be actually posting on in Facebook groups and things like that. It's more credible if it comes from a library account. But um, you know, even as much as writing the copy for posts, we're happy to do that. And may I jump in for just a sec? Um, I feel like too that the library has worked very hard in the last few years to build relationships with a lot of community leaders. And for example, the um, the third Tuesday uh, Chamber of Commerce breakfast meetings that are here every month that is getting a very good crowd of people. And we've I think just really built uh, some relationships and like we go participate in their strategic planning things. So I think feel like you know the school principals and things like that will be more willing to come. And, and they did uh, to some extent last time too. But I, I feel like we've you know, we can kind of pass those contacts along to Sarah so that she can make the actual invitation, but I feel like we've kind of built some relationship with some of those to, so that they'll be willing. I found too, community leaders, especially, um, you know, representatives of some of these groups we've talked about, they're really responsive in participating in things like this, um, especially if you've had a history in working with other organizations. And generally, uh, Susan, what's the time frame they were looking for? For the entire project, um, it, it since we want to do some of the talking out in the community where people are, we want some of it to be in good weather. So, sure. um, so we're thinking that uh, we will still want to be talking to people a little bit in early summer and then kind of wrapping it up midsummer. Is that? I think it's a little a little extended from the original plan, but I think that's kind of what we have in mind. Yeah, I guess you know we have struggled. As a library, I think, and as a board, to um, get a representation to the, the areas where the library really doesn't serve that population as well as we'd like, and clearly to the uh, majority of people in the community that don't even have library cards. I, I noticed that in our last statistics, I think the library holders, card holders, are less than half the uh, total population. So clearly, we would be looking to you for suggestions in both of, of those areas. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure that's yeah. something that you do. Absolutely. I had a question. I, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Yeah. I had a question about the timeline as well. <clears throat> in terms of the questionnaire or survey mm -hmm. that you would have on our website and, and uh, whatever, social media, how long did you think you wanted that to be up? Uh, usually at least two weeks but no longer than three is a sweet spot. Um, it allows us to send you know, a reminder after about a week and a half. If, it, if it's up for a really long time, it gets stale and people don't feel the urgency of answering, but a shorter time period, obviously, we will miss people. So usually between two and three weeks is a great decision. Okay, so that, that would probably then apply for the library website. But um, in terms of going out into the community, and uh, we, you know, last year we did have focus groups. We had business, we had education, we had community leaders. And the turnout, um, the community leaders was probably the largest group, but the others were rather small. And I think what's happening is when you narrow the time frame to just a few weeks, people just can't seem to make it. And I, I, I noticed that you mentioned that you want to go out into the community to our events, and you mentioned. Um, Niles Night Out or whatever it's called and that is at the end of the summer and so I'm wondering right now it's February in a couple in a month even and a few taking a few weeks within the next month I don't know if those are really productive times for people to be out and about our kids are in school and I feel like we put a lot of energy into this last year but you know we just we just didn't hit the mark with a lot of attendees and I, I want, I think we need to expand the time, but I think we really need to be open to when people can, can come to these, these focus groups. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we're interested in targeting residents who, I guess we don't reach or don't come to the library. I agree that's important, but there are residents right here mm -hmm. that we still don't reach. And I, I'm, I'm all for technology and, and doing things electronically, but I still think we have a large population that still paper, mm -hmm. you know, and um, they, they're gonna fill out a paper question. They're never gonna fill out anything electronic, I should say. Mm -hmm. So 
we're going to miss them if we don't have an opportunity to do something in writing. But I agree, if you only have it here, you just have the regulars. But what I wanted to mention is our library has a quarterly mailer called Chapter One. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if in an upcoming print, you could have your surveyor questionnaire added to that and see if that would draw more of a response. And that would be in paper. And all the people who don't use computers would get that. Because I noticed in your notes, you mentioned that you would, you would consider a mailing. And, and we've already went into that field. It's quite costly. Yep. So we, we probably wouldn't do that. But I, I'm really concerned about the time frame that you're going to use to try to, to get these groups. And I, I do agree that we should reach out to um, the other organizations. Not, not, we've done the park district. You know, the village is huge, and, and they're all very helpful. They all, they all come to our events, or when we have something, they're all there. But I think if we could reach out to the um, senior citizen homes or um, you know, whatever establishments we have that aren't necessarily governmental, yeah. I think um, that would really help. And again, I don't know that library staff can really get there, but that you would be interested in that would really, you know, to try to do yeah. the legwork would yeah. really be helpful. But I, I think I, I don't know, three weeks doesn't seem like a really long time to me. So to be clear, the three weeks is when the survey would be open. So that's not that doesn't include the focus groups or the community conversations or talking to staff. That would just be the yeah, right. um, here's when the link is mm -hmm. open. Yeah. The rest will take. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, no. Well, and, and even in that, like, well, I don't know. Sasha would be the master of how many people would probably, um, you know, um, see this link in three weeks. I don't know. I don't remember what the period of time was last year, but um, if you're uncomfortable with that too, we can. It. I mean, no, I'm just asking. It's always been like a great amount of time to Okay, and then I'm wondering when is a better amount of time. I don't know. I don't, you know, I'm not even sure. If, if, if they're all millennials, it doesn't matter when. If they're parents of school <laughs> age kids, that may be a factor. You know, I'm, you know, I'm just saying, I, I just want to see us open this up more than we did, not last year, but the last time. Because our, our numbers were low, and, and we, we do have a lot of people that we can still reach. Hey, Carolyn, can I jump right on that? Yeah. Part? So, uh, Susan, when does that quarterly newsletter come out? It comes out in April? Is it? There's an April, May, There's an April, June, so, July. Okay, so, you know, I, Carolyn, I'm 100% agreeing with you, I think. Yes. Putting a, a, Good idea. The, the link in there. Maybe or the they'll, they'll get it on. Sure. Yeah. But, but that would extend this timeline a bit. Sure. Yeah, well, and I think, it, yeah, I think well, that would be so. Or a paper? I, I, well, I think both. Just a link. It I think putting the link and the paper, why not? Oh, not absolutely. No, I'll we're, we're spending the money to do the newsletter anyway. Sure. You know. Yeah, just to clarify, though, we did have actually excellent attendance at both the leader and the education group. It was the business one is the one where it fell down abysmally. But as far as education, so. most of the people that were there were from 63. I'd like to see us gravitate towards no, the other areas. No, it, it was from Notre Dame. It was there from There were four John people Rebecca. from 63. Sure, and yeah. there were um, three others from somewhere else. I don't think SJB made it, but Notre Dame did, and I think so did the Culver and North Parkers. Right. Isn't Culver 63? 71. 71. Oh, okay. Sorry. Well, there was a. But I'd like yes, to see. Yes, 63 is seven schools, so okay. there should be more people there. But I'd like to see us try to target even more schools, and and I guess the other thing is sometimes we need to be cognizant of what's going on, and you know schools are pretty carbon copies of each other. Can I ask this so. question? Uh, is it possible <clears throat> to, to have the churches um, put something in their bulletin? Uh, you know, when they do Advertise? Well, and tell them when it'll be open maybe on our website? Yeah, there's something in there. What I've learned about well, our parishes, our faith, is they're glad to do it if they have space and if they have time. So what you want to do is send them something. You can email them. I have all those addresses. And you email them and just hope that now's a good time sure. or within the next couple of weeks. But it would be nice to, you know, I don't know. Give them the seven, link or something, yeah. Seven mm -hmm. churches, I think. Sure, the, yeah. Because yeah. how much space would it take to say, please go to the library link right. and fill out the yeah. church? And they don't mind. Oh, they'll put anything in, yeah. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's... <laughs> Relatively. Yeah, they're very... Right. <laughs> Topic of uh, night out. She said it's the end of summer. What about Fourth of July parade? 
they have a big thing after the 4th of July parade where a lot of parents and residents are there with, and it's like the park is jam-packed. Mm -hmm. Have a booth. Right. That's a perfect place. Yeah, and, that, and that, know, that is sorry, the kind of thing. This, is, yeah. this sounds like it's really extending your timeline, but I think it is important to try to accommodate as many of these suggestions yeah. as many people as possible. Well, I mean, that we had all those in mind. Mm -hmm. Niles Night Out was just one example. We had yeah. we want to go to you know baseball games and you know any place where like sure. parents might be sitting around waiting yes. and going to like yes. grocery Dance stores and women. flag people down there just wherever people are out and about in the community mm -hmm. yeah but so this our time the timeline here the timeline would definitely be changed okay. that's okay. Yeah, she, oh, she says it's a tentative one and it would definitely yeah. get okay. switched up I would just say, who are the people that are going to go yeah. and do all this work exactly. off yeah. hours? I have a community engagement team. Yes. They are all the people that they yeah. 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 are. Right here. Community <laughs> engagement. I'm no, I'm, no, I'm serious. I, I'm just curious. Yeah. I didn't hear your answer. I have a community engagement team. That was something that came out of the last strategic plan, and it's all the people that go out in the community now, the people that work in outreach, the people, the school liaisons, um, and then uh, some of the program people that are doing some programs off-site now. So it's anybody that gets out and around into the community. Um, and you know, I'm not saying that we're gonna go to 20 different things. I think, you know, I pick up we have a few good ones. As many as we can. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, you know, we'll do what we can do. But yeah, the 4th of July is definitely, that's where I mean, you get that's the huge. maximum number of people. And yeah, yeah so. That's huge. huge. Yeah, but we just found that the, the, um, the focus groups last time with the regular people that were not the leaders and things, they did, you know, people are busy. They don't, yeah. they, we care much more about the library than they do, and they're not going to take an hour and a half of their time to go with the most frustrating thing is to yeah. try to get mm -hmm. that. That, that was, that was disappointing last time. Yeah, so, the well, incentives you know, good. Yeah. yeah, true. <laughs> they <laughs> <it's> like, <laughs> give, it a, give a survey out with every free hot dog. That <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Free hot dogs. <laughs> they already get that at the parade. Oh, we can have service instead of cameras. Yeah. Most yeah. <laughs> people would be so thrilled. Yeah. All right, that's very good. Any other questions? Betty, Diane? Carolyn? No, see? I think I'm done. Thank you. Great. 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 Thanks for having me. Thank you, Thank so you very much. So are we going to talk about this then later? Yes. Thank you. 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 Do I have a motion to approve the minutes of the regular board meeting of January 15th, 2020? Second. Okay. Does anyone want to make a motion to change the January minutes? Not hearing any motion. I have some. Oh, we have a motion. question first about our process last month um, we have a new process yes but I wanted to mention that I motioned last month to add a, um, a portion of the attorney's statement and um, the trustees Denied that request. I wrote it down. So I don't. At the last board of meeting, I requested to include a missing portion of Attorney Scott Euler's statement, and it was, and they could also be objections. So you went around the table, and the comments were, Trustee Spadoni, you stated, I don't think, I don't like this particular change. Trustee Diamond said, I don't think this okay, change Carolyn, do you have a motion on the table? What is your motion? Yes. Okay, but my point is, the, the, the reasons that you denied those minutes, and I don't want to go through this again until I can bring this point up, is that according to the Open Meetings Act and our library attorney, minutes should be an accurate summary of the discussion. According to Robert's rules, uh -huh. Approval of minutes is not voting if you are happy or like the minutes. Approval of minutes 
is an accurate representation of what was said as a historical document. Okay. So the truth of the matter is the attorney did state that portion of the sentence. We excluded it. So my motion was to correct it. Okay. But yet your vote was based on your personal feelings, which is not a reason to approve minutes. I feel that's not accurate. I feel that you're wrong. That my statement here is wrong? I feel that my minutes were not based on my feelings. Well, that's what, you're, that's what you said. You stated, I don't, oh, I don't like this particular. Well, I didn't, I didn't, believe, I didn't believe in it. When I said like, I meant that, yet, in essence. But, it but it's not like your opinion that, that matters. It's the fact that the attorney stated that point. Uh -huh. And it was important, and I asked for it to be Okay, well, do you have a motion? For that? Yes, for the minutes. We're talking about the minutes. So this is from the meeting before so now, the minutes. So now I just want to bring your attention to that. And now I'm bringing up minutes for today. Okay. What do you want us to do? Okay, page four, paragraph three. Um, I motion to modify by removing in the same paragraph, that's the first, the beginning of the sentence, and replacing it with regarding attorney Scott Euler because that's what that subject was about. So you wanted to say, rather than saying in the same paragraph, you wanted to say regarding Scott Euler. Attorney Trustee Scott Euler, Euler right, right, and then it goes on. By well, second the motion. Comments, discussion? No comments? I just want to read that again what you said here. I mean, it seems, it seems like we're modifying, we're trying to modify from two <coughs> meetings ago, which we already discussed. We're, you're talking about page four of this current minutes, right, Carolyn? Yes. Yes. So she wants to modify page four of the current minutes. Third paragraph. paragraph. Yeah, third paragraph. Right here where it says, yeah, in, in the same, the same paragraph. paragraph. She wants to modify that to say his name and that that is to the term. All right, I seconded it. Any comments? Yeah, it, it still is modifying what happened two minutes, two minutes ago. Uh, whether or not the attorney actually said that or what happened. It, it just seems to me Would you like to see the minutes to well, help you? No, I, I'm looking at these right now. And, um, well, the December just, minutes to be here with his name. Um, it just seems like we're going back and modifying two minutes ago. I think it's unnecessary. It's not accurate. Uh, uh, Karen said. No. Okay. No. Okay. No. Okay. 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 This is for the original motion? This is, I'm sorry, this is the original motion. motion. I'm sorry, not the original motion. This is we're voting on the motion to change paragraph three. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Yeah. This is a okay. motion to change so paragraph three. Karen is no. Right. Carolyn is. Carolyn? Yes. Diane? No. Okay. No. Linda's not here. Tim? Yes. Sue? So. Yes. I have just one other on page five, um, paragraph one. I motion to modify by correcting the words cost to cost benefit analysis. I'm sorry, Carolyn, what page? What? Five, paragraph, page. Five. paragraph one. One. The, it says um, she has the word cost, cost, but what I said was cost benefit analysis. Okay.
second the motion. Any comments? So you're saying this is what you actually said, and you just, it's yes. not. I didn't say cost, I said cost, but I also said Yes. 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 All right, uh, so now we are going to, uh, how do we want to say that again? Yeah, so, so the original motion is moot. So uh, now can I have a, uh, I make a motion to uh, accept the minutes as modified. Uh, can I have a second on that? A second. Great. Diane, which take a roll in there. Sorry. Well, it's okay. I just re need to redo my, my form a little bit. Okay, so uh, Tim I made the motion, motion to correct. second it, correct. right? Okay, so. All right. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Diane? Yes. Annie? Yes. Tim? Yes. So, yes. All right. Uh, we have our thing. Susan, I don't have a thing to say here. Okay, trust reports. Um, I, uh, I personally don't have anything this past month, though I am attending uh, Romeo and Juliet's. I was actually going to talk about that in other, but if you want to talk about that now, we can too. Uh, I'm going to attend Romeo and Juliet. This coming Friday, I, I highly recommend all of us to consider going to those uh, Shakespeare productions. They're just marvelous, really marvelous. So that's all I've got. And I am going to be working with Jabez on a podcast uh, in reference to our upcoming newsletter. That's what I've got. You're going to be something in the newsletter about. Uh your podcast? Yes. Okay, great. Yeah. great. So, you wanted to talk about that? Uh, yeah, right. Well, um, I was going to talk about a few things. Uh, sure. First of all, oh, to uh, the cooking class this past weekend, which was great. I think uh, libraries are an important place to learn, but there's some things that are best learned in person, and that is cooking and uh, watching someone and asking them questions as they do it. So, that, that's very helpful. Um, this is the second one of those I've gone to. I also went to briefly to Oscar night which was uh, great fun. It's sort of fun to be in the library after hours and uh, uh, get to uh, in, enjoy the services of the library at that time. And then uh, Monday, I went to a legislative breakfast. Uh, Patty was there, uh, this was Susan, and sat next to Senator Ron Villavalone, who once again is you know, very receptive to the concerns of libraries. He came and he you know, listened to the entire presentation, and uh, uh, I, I really think that he can be an important ally of ours, because uh, he does seem very concerned and interested about the Nats Public Library. Definitely. Right. So uh, Tim just passed around a photocopy of an article that was in the Chicago Tribune uh, just this past week, and uh, we both cut it out, uh, I noticed, and it's just a great article. Uh, the library's the cultural attraction. And it uh, starts out by saying, which of the following is the most common cultural activity in the United States? Like the movies, a concert, a sporting event, a library, a museum, a zoo, a national park, or a casino. And according to the Gallup poll, uh, it's going to the library. Americans went to the library 10 and a half times a year on average. And the next closest thing was going to the movies. It was like half as many times. So, um, Just imagine if we had a casino in the library. Right. <laughs> right, right, right. So, God um, forbid. I, I just uh, thought this was very interesting. I don't want to read the whole thing, but I'm glad, Tim, that you made some copies of it. Thank you. And yeah. anybody who wants to pick up an extra copy, I think we do have some extra ones here. Um, but I also thought it, uh, it's, it's, it was interesting. It said, if you think the so-called digital native generation will be turning its back on libraries, guess again. 
Visits to the library highest among the youngest group, 18 to 29 years old. At fifth five, they have visits per year. Uh, so I, I, I just thought that it was very interesting and it just really confirmed um, the library's role as a cultural institution in this community. Um, as, as you in this article and by, as substantiated by the, uh, the data that they collected from the Gallup polls. Absolutely, yeah, thank you. Yeah. I don't have my things listed in order, and I don't have show and tell, so I know you're grateful. <laughs> I love show and tell. Yeah, tell me, tell me the truth. Um, I was here for the uh, Bulgarian uh, diplomat that was here, and they had the explaining about their dance and the history of it, and they actually had some people. And they had a movie, and I thought I really was educational. I really enjoyed it, and it was interesting. Uh, basically, it's a thing to get rid of evil spirits. So they go into different people's houses and do their thing with the bells and their dance, and it's supposed to get rid of evil spirits, which I thought was kind of cool. Uh, I was also at the legislative branch or breakfast rather. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, and yeah, Ron was. Multiple times I heard him say, if you need anything, contact me, which I thought was very nice. Um, I was here to make mittens out of a sweater. That was fun. That was interesting. Not exactly what I thought, but it was fun. Um, also for the Zodiac necklace, which was cool. Um, Nitwits, I always go to Nitwits. Um, I'm, and what I love about Knitwood is it's really growing. That's our knitting and crochet club. It's it's last. How, how many people? Are last time I think we had probably close to ten, which I think is great. Um, then I was also at the talk on herbs that the garden club uh, presented, and that was very interesting and educational too. And I thought it was kind of humorous to myself because the earth they said was easy to grow and I, I, I kill. And the one they said, nobody can grow, I grow and it's like a wheat. So I don't know what my problem is. <laughs> so yes, I'm very, very impressed by the things I did. So, so in summary, you personally raise this average of the people going libraries up like 50%. I, I do my best. <laughs> Very nice, thank you, Katie. Well, someone wanna jump in on anything? Um, I went to the Niles Chamber of Commerce um, breakfast. Oh, with, nice. Uh, with my, uh, two people on our staff, and Lauren here today, and it was very nice to learn a little bit about the village, and it was nice to see our, our library staff um, involved in a community. Uh, like the Niles Chamber of Commerce, I mean, NRA actually on committees and it was good to see. Um, I also wanted to mention something that isn't mentioned in our notes and it's really not a library event, but um, the school in our district was sponsoring an event which was Read with a Partner uh, Community, Read with someone in the community with one of their students and I was part of that. And so it was Donna Block. Um, in the team department. What, what school is that? Um, Emerson. Oh, okay. And cool. District 64. Yeah, 64. 64. 64. Yeah. yeah. So that was just another is this outreach. Reading with like one reading other student. Reading with a sixth grader. We read oh, the nice. same book and nice. we communicated and talked about it together. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Nice. So, Good yeah. for you. So it was another community outreach that yeah, was mentioned nice. for yeah. the uh, young adults. Sure. Actually. Sure. How many people participate? Oh, a there? lot. Really? I mean, like two classroom folks. So really? Maybe 50. 50 students and 50 adults. Right? It's cool. Yes, yeah, it was very nice. And then we all met eventually with the students. Sure. Well, good. Good for you. Thank you, Nancy. Carolyn or Sue? Yeah. No. No. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I also attended the, um, the mayor's uh, luncheon, the Chamber of Commerce, and it was very interesting. Although that, 
the um, officials that work for organizations are recognized, but perhaps the library was not necessarily recognized, but it wasn't. Um, and libraries do seem to get short shrifts sometimes in, these, in many communities, but I also attended a legislative luncheon in the western suburbs in conjunction with the library where I work, and um, there is a lot of state legislators who are huge library fans. We have one of the legislators that's in that, and the group that actually is a librarian, and so um, they went on and on and on about their love of libraries and the support and whatever the, um, the lobbyists and the ILA lobbyists need, they're going to be there to help and, and support. So that was very encouraging. And I also was very honored to be able to uh, do a little kickoff for the Libraries in Service Day. And um, I apologize that what I said made somebody cry. <laughs> I'm sorry in a good way. Oh, okay. was it me? <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm just heard somebody did. <laughs> Sam, thank you for doing that. I was. I okay, very good. Thank you all. Uh, next item on the agenda is Treasurer's Report. Betty? Thank you. January the 7th, month of fiscal year, 58% of our way through the budget. The library overall expenditures are under budget at 45% of the total budget. Revenues, total revenues are 48% of the budget. Property taxes, 51% of the budget. Fines, 66% of the budget. Replacement tax, 73% of the budget. Investment income, 108% of the budget. That's pretty cool, thank you. Uh, passport income was 74% of the budget. Salaries, uh, slightly lower than the budget at 57%. Library, page nine, <coughs> library materials are at 61% of the budget. Library operation expenditures are at 47 percent of the overall category is under budget. Uh, page 10, general and administration at 54 percent of the overall category is just a little under budget. Page 11, employees fringe benefit is under budget by 53 percent. Utilities a little under budget at 56, thank God for warm weather. Uh, capital expenditures under budget at 10%, and building equipment and materials under budget at 43%. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Very good, thank you so much. Anytime. Any comments on that treasurer's report? No? Okay. You're very well done. Uh, I will now entertain a motion to approve the payment of bills for operating expenses of 230000 $228.70, payroll expenses of $293,629.25, and special reserve expenses of $127,784.36, for total monthly expense of $651,642.25. Do I hear a motion? Motion. Second. Great. All right, any discussion? Uh, Sue, we'll start with you this time. I'm with Okay, great. Carolyn? Anything? Um, let me see. Want to read a code there? Please, yes, I'm. Yeah. Sure, that's not a problem. Thank you. Uh, yes, approval. Uh, no, we're just discussing. We're just discussing. Nothing to say. Nothing to say. Thank you. No questions. No questions. Carolyn, we'll back to you. All right. I had one question. It's about, um, I'm on page 25, and it's um, for Verizon Wireless. It says mobile phone charge, and I believe there are two. No, yes, there are two, $213.68 each. It says telephone, ad telephone administrative ser service, I believe that's what it is. What does that mean? Do we have cell phones for the library? Yeah, we have uh, 
uh, we have a, a security phone that uh, Dave carries around. And we also have a uh, phone for the uh, person in charge in the evening and the weekends. Okay, so um, there are, these are only two phones? I believe so. So the only people who have a cell phone then, well, security, and then whoever the evening and weekends person is, is that what that is? Mm -hmm. I didn't see any other, so um, I think Richway would have one. IT has yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, does IT have it? Yeah. Okay. So is it so two hundred and thirteen dollars is could be more than one phone? Is that what we're saying here? Yes. Is that what that means? I think we have four. Okay. Two here and two downstairs, so four. Okay. Well, thank you. I just wasn't. I didn't know what that was. Um, and that's it. Oh, thank you, Carolyn. And I, I never knew we had cell phone view. Kind of makes sense, though. Oh, absolutely. Cool. Cool. Sure. Mm -hmm. All righty, um, Diane, would you take the roll, please? Okay, Karen. Yes. Carolyn. Um, Diane. Yes. Carolyn. Yes. Patty. Yes. 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 Great. Next item on the agenda is the director's report. Okay. Um, I just wanted to let you know what we're doing to get ready for the census because the, it is coming right up. Um, I decided I, I had reached out to a number of organizations back about a year ago to say, the library, you know, we have all these computers. We'd really like to be helpful. Let us know what you need. Nobody ever got back to me, so I finally gave up waiting for people to get back to me, and I assigned two of my staff, uh, Susie Wolf and Mary Kay Stiff, the head of adult services and digital services, to take this on, research it, and um, I told them that I wanted us to be uh, as helpful to the community as possible in getting a good census count, because that matters to everybody. Mm -hmm. And so then this past week, they, they have... Uh, they have been working with, a, uh, you saw in Mary Kay's report that she's got somebody coming and recruiting for census workers in the lobby and answering a lot of questions about the census. And then um, they got training um, and they learned a lot about it. And so uh, we're going to have it on all of the, almost all of the computers that go up that are patron facing so that they can go to basically to any computer and do it. We are training the staff in digital services, adult services, and youth services, because there may be some grandmas and nannies and people like that that come into youth services to do it, but, but not on the middle school computers. I figured they're the one category that there's no reason for them to have it. Um, and so we're just, uh, so then this week I reached out to all those community organizations again and said, please let everybody know that the library is open 70 hours a week. We have all these computers. We have staff that will be trained. Send them our way. And so they, they seem to be very, very pleased with that. Cool. So we are doing our best to the, both the state and that it came up a lot at the at legislative breakfast that they really are counting on libraries mm -hmm. to really help because they're really trying to get their yeah. online response this time. So that is kind of everything that I didn't include in the report already. It was a great staff day, but I already wrote about that. Mm -hmm. so. Well, I'd like to say um, good job with the fire alarm that went off. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, Greg yes. happened to be PIC that night, so he got, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. everybody just did their yeah. thing, and yeah. training was perfect. Good. Training things? Yeah. Okay. And then I like the idea of the Commons desk being a place where you can go to and ask a question right away. Yeah. It's perfect for yeah. the library. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, I had uh, I enjoyed the director's report, a lot of information, and thanks very much. I did have one question about a uh, comment that was made by Peter. I have a couple, but anyway, one of them is I'm going to just talk about one of the news and noise from the underground. I, I it does seem like we get comments about this. It's the same person oh, one it? to month. Uh, I mean, they. Okay. I, I'm not saying that's the only person that complains, sure. but it, what you're seeing written down is the same person. Okay. And we've talked about that, and there's really no way to deaden the... Uh, it, it's much better report. than it was. It's okay. just, you know, some people are more easily disturbed, but they do have the option of checking out a laptop and going into a study room yeah. or yeah. taking the laptop all the way up to the third floor, which is the silent level, 
So they have options. It's Why does this when, person not want to do that? Uh, yeah, are there laptops available? Yeah, uh, well, there was. I was here um, sure. on, was it Monday or was it Tuesday? Anyway, I was here earlier in the week. And while I was standing at the, the uh, tech desk, somebody came, took a, uh, a laptop or, you know, and went upstairs. So I would assume they have enough available. Yeah, we have a few. Uh, you know, it, it is. There's no way to soundproof it quite enough. I mean, we could work on it some more. The problem is you've got all that beautiful wood, and so, you know, we could cover all that wood with sound dampening, you know, foam, but it would kind of spoil the look of the room. So we put some up, but we could we could add to it. But I think there, I mean, before we put up the screen on it, we, I was getting complaints about many, many more complaints, mm -hmm. and I think that was just, they could see that the teens were in there, and that made them annoyed. There are just some people that don't think they should be here. Don't like teens. No. And, and don't like that they're having fun. How dare they have fun? Yeah. Well, the wood floor is eight inches thick. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, uh, wood is a great conductor of, sure, of sound. Yes. You know, so, you know, when it gets, when it gets going. And actually, uh, it's the last 30 feet of the second floor, which are, is directly over teens. If you, if you move off of that spot, it's, it's a lot better. Yeah, but this is, I think, somebody we're using. I think it's someone downstairs. Yeah. Yeah. Down, downstairs? Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I thought they were on the second floor. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. I'm surprised we don't get more comments about that, because that is actually where it would be annoying. Good. Thank you. I actually have a question on page 46, uh, Steve Dougherty's patron information request. I, I keep reading it, and I'm not sure I understand what the request is. You said this request was filled. It doesn't sound like there's a request here. Yeah, that's what, the email I got. I, I, what, how did you fill the request? He wanted the, he wanted the roof for inspection report, so I gave him that. Ah, okay. Yeah. Ah, gotcha. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, when I read that, I understood something about the roof, but like you said, I wasn't sure It doesn't, doesn't say, was. please provide this to me, or it doesn't yeah. really say anything. All right, very good. Any other comments on the I just have report? one sure, Carol. question. It was, and I lost it. Two of our library staff went to something called Family Resource Room Camp. Yeah, it's the District 63 took Stevenson School and they converted it into a parent resource center, um, which is basically where their after school program moved to. That's the site for it now, and they've expanded the, what they offer. So, yeah. Oh, so that's where they I was wondering, I thought it was another facility. Well, no, no. It's, it's District 63. That's all right. Thank you. 64 is behind my house. 63. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, I just wanted to say, I think, uh, you know, geez, this passport thing, I have two statements. One, we earned 7000 out of it in one month. That's pretty cool. That was a net. And... Um, we had mentioned about doing the photos. Is there, have you found out any information about that? It was talked about, I don't think, last month or the month yeah. before. We haven't found out what we're going to do, but we're definitely working toward it. Yeah, we've selected uh, equipment uh -huh. and we're going to purchase it. Um, then the staff is going to familiarize themselves with it. Okay. And uh, we plan on rolling it out. Uh, at the latest uh, June first. Okay, cool. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna make sure that people are, are know about it ahead of time. Yeah, yeah, so they you know the the problem with passport photos is that if you if you smile or if it's if they cut the top of your head off like my mother does and all the pictures that I have, <laughs> um, then those photos are considered to be bad photos. Mm -hmm. You know if um, if the size of your head is too large. You know, um, because you're too close, you zoomed, zoomed in too far. Then, you know, those are, you know, those create issues. It may cause your passport to be rejected. So, my other question on that is because most of the time people have to go like to Walgreens or something and pay to have it done. Oh, is there, pay for this. Yeah. I was going to say, is there going to be a, a a charge and there will be for that? There will be, and I think it will be up to we will make a recommendation to the board, but it will basically be the board's decision whether they want that to have some profit built into it or if you just want to cover the costs. 
and so, but we will but come to the to board with. But you have to figure out what the yeah. cost is going exactly. to be. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. But we will be bringing that to the board maybe as soon as next month. I don't know. Okay. Cool. Or the month after. Thank you very much. Can I just ask one question about taking the pictures? Aren't there some parameters or there's some setup where every time you take a picture for a passport, you don't cut their head off, correct? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. We don't have. That's, okay. that's, that's what, what they want to do. Saying is the to keep educational it part of All right. it. All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that the staff kind of gets tired of, 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 of sending people away because their pictures won't work well, so they want to just do it for yeah, them. Well, so plus I can well imagine a lot of people are annoyed for that, too. Well, so they are. Yeah, yeah. it becomes a bad service center. Sure, sure. Let's go. Let's do it. Uh, yeah, one final comment then. Um, page 50, just again for the viewing public, if anybody does view these videos, uh, we have uh, people who come up and to ask us to cut expendis, expenditures, and we also have people who uh, often ask us to spend more money. So it is a constant back and forth. Uh, we did have a suggestion to open the library 24-7. So that is a resident who would like us to more than triple or triple our expenditures, right? So in their view is, is uh, equally as important to anybody else's view. Uh, we have somebody who uh, wants uh, X6 more senior stuff, somebody who wants more databases, somebody who wants more uh, books and a uh, specific topic. So um, yeah, just realize that there are a lot of people who and want the cost expanded of services. 24-7 would be unbelievable. It would be outstanding. I don't think anybody. So many of our resources are already available 24-7 on our electronic yeah, download things, stream mm -hmm. things. Especially if they have database. a library There's card. There's it's so many nice. more things available to you. All right, very good. I didn't I didn't want to deliver that point, but just that there are people who want to spend more or people who want to spend less. Okay, page 51. Yeah, there are people who want to spend more or people who want to spend less. Okay, very good. Thank you so much, Susan. Can I, can I, yes. Can I have, like, one thing in Absolutely. Susan's report. Uh, do you have a page particular that you want to highlight? Or? I don't know. Okay, okay. that's fine. Um, but uh, there is a comment in there that we did have an engineering firm come out and talk to us about uh, green roofs. Karen uh, mm -hmm. brought up uh, green yes. roofs uh, is a possibility either you know having um, a literally green roof with plants and, mm -hmm. and, and dirt on the roof mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, also talked about perhaps putting a solar array on the roof mm -hmm. and um, you know I found uh, this engineer through um, uh, Frederick Flint they had actually done a project not too far from where I live where they they built a new public building for the village of countryside and it's a net zero building, cool. which means yeah. they, you know, they're completely off the grid. Mm -hmm. um, and I take that with a grain of salt because you can't, you know, it's hard to generate power at night, you know, unless you have a battery array right behind the solar array. Right? So what they're probably doing, in all likelihood, is what's called net metering. You know, so yeah, they do a lot of electricity during the day and sell yeah. it into the yeah. into the grid, yeah. and then at night they're drawing back from the grid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but. All in, it's zero. Net zero. Um, so we looked at it, and I was, you know, I was skeptical. Um, biggest concern we had was the ability of the roof to be able to Absolutely. support this, you know, the, the weight. And what we found is that uh, this roof, and then the roof on the far end of the third floor, the south end of the third floor, is is strong enough to support a solar. And uh, right, uh, they couldn't make determinations from the drawings on all of the roofs, but those were the two that they that they did get, and it makes sense. It's more it's more recent. So um, uh, what they've been able to do is to find space on those two uh, on those two roofs that will generate or support a grade that will generate uh, eighty thousand kilowatt hours per year. Um, we use about 90,000, maybe like 88,000 or something like that. They believe that they may be able to find room to create uh, an array to support the other thing, or the other 10,000 to get us up to 90,000. That would be great. Yeah, that would be terrific. So, you know, it sounds you know, very space age, very expensive, very out of reach. It's coming down though. And you know, not only that, isn't there some kind of government uh, thing they had 
for for individuals. For incentives. Yeah, they get it for individuals, but they have it for. What you're referring to, Patty, is something that usually comes in the way of a tax rebate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And since uh, since we're yeah. a governmental institution, they don't take that. Okay. Okay. Um, so uh, I, you know, asked them a little bit about the cost, and they said the cost uh, right now is right around four dollars per kilowatt. Okay, so at 80000 that's about $320,000 or so. There is money out there. We're aware of a grant through one of our suppliers that we could apply for, and it's $100,000, so that would bring it down to like $220,000, let's say. And um, if we're going to talk about replacing all of the, let's call it 250000 Okay, and that includes all the infrastructure to plug in and so on and so forth. Uh, solar array lasts 20 to 25 years. Uh, we pay about $85,000 a year in electrical costs. So the payback would be pretty fast. Yeah. Okay, like four years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if this all works. Now, I do want to say that part of the, what we pay in electricity is for transmission. But uh, uh, so we pay some to ComEd and some to uh, Constellation Energy, where we actually buy you know the electricity, and then we have to pay to get it to our building, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but because it's volume driven, uh, we expect those the transmission costs to go down too. But it's hard to tell how much, and I don't know if we're pushing electricity out if there's a transmission cost. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, you know, but I mean, you know, let's, you know, call it $80,000, you know, for discussion purposes. And that's all we're doing right now. Um, so after four years, we are absolutely paid back. It takes like three years. Uh, if it's $250,000. Uh, yeah, if you get the grant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah if you get the grant. So that would be there. I don't think that would, uh, we, that would be, that'd be huge if we got that grant. Just for the record. Just, let's, just, let's just follow it. Sure. Throw it out in me. Yeah, yeah, let's go. That's yeah, that's why that's true. Let's just follow it four years. Okay. Um, which means that the remaining 21 years of life we're avoiding $85,000 a year. Which is huge. Okay. Which is about a million eight, approximately, in, uh, in overall cost. Okay. Now, the interesting thing about a million eight is that it more than pays for our roof. Whatever the cost is. Right. Yeah. If the cost is a million seven, you know, we're on top of it by $600,000. If the cost is a million, it's eight hundred thousand. If the cost is a hundred and thirty-four thousand I dollars, mean, you know, you can do the math. So, um, but in order to put the solar array up there, do we have to beef it up? Well, what we have to do is we have to put a new roof on it because if you do it now before you push yeah. the new roof on it, then you're going to have to take it all down and then reinstall it mm -hmm. once the once the new roof is put in. Yeah, is there uh, additional costs, uh, staffing-wise, in order to maintain the equipment? Uh, do, do, I mean, do people have to go up there during the winter? No. To take the snow off and, you know, no, actually, because um, uh, I asked the same question, and, and actually they said, you know, because it's dark and because it's absorbing the UV rays, uh, it generates a little bit of heat. It generates enough heat to, to uh, you know, to keep it clean. It is tinted. Yeah, it is tilted, so it'll slide. And periodically, you have to, you know, maybe once a year, go up and yeah, yeah, rinse them off. Yeah, sure. <laughs> rinse them off because they get dusty. Uh, mm -hmm. Sure, sure. Okay. So, you know, I mean, so and, and our, so you said that like up the, just a rough cost of fifty thousand for electrical infrastructure to accommodate the direct current from a solar into the. Uh, Yes, well, the we all-in cost of four dollars per watt includes all of the all of the infrastructure. Yeah. So you know, uh, like I said, it, it looks promising. It, nothing's official. Sure, it sure. It is sure, a little bit sure, of feedback sure. that we got. No, that's great. It's great. Uh -huh. I, I was talking to the contractor, a professional, this weekend about solar roofs too, and he's and he's talking about you know putting a new roof on your house. Well, that's what I was talking about. And he said. That, 
it's important that one thing you want to make sure you do is to get the flashing right because you don't want to be causing leaks when you're putting those yeah, absolutely. panels up there. So it's good to coordinate these projects. Absolutely. And, uh, absolutely. You know, so, mind the, you, know, the, you know, the stanchions, uh, the stanchions would have to be installed. Uh -huh. Sure. And it would probably be installed during the, uh, process. the roofing process, uh -huh. Uh -huh. so that when they're actually laying the new membrane uh -huh. down, that they can you know seal around it appropriately. Like, so I have to a follow-up question. So you said it was on which part of the roofs that would? It's on. It's on. Yeah. This, there's. If you look at um, the, the Google Earth, Earth if mm -hmm. you, yeah, there's uh -huh. a there's a long expanse on uh -huh. the northern end, which is directly above us. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's basically from the chillers, you know, all the way to the end. And of course, we want to give buffer space, you know, from the edges and so forth. And then on the south roof, you know, which runs from the, uh, uh, I'm going to call it the turret, the tower, um, all the way east, is you know, is where the second bigger rate would, uh, would be based on their understanding. Of this. I see. Okay. So let me just throw one more thing. Okay. And that is. Areas where we don't have solar panels, that's where we can put the green roof. <laughs> no, let, let, let me just finish, let me just finish because uh, no, we're probably not going to put enough dirt up there to support trees. Now that probably won't happen. But sedum, you put sedum up there, it doesn't really doesn't weigh that much. Yeah. And I just did a little experiment myself this past year on my roof, which I can climb out to by going out the window and bringing my roof. We just put a flat of sedum out there and you know, it grows really easy. It's really good. Uh, yeah, we, really we talked. We talked about that, and mm -hmm. they uh, talked about uh, four to eight inches of dirt mm -hmm. of, of media to hold up all of that stuff. Uh -huh. um, and when I started thinking about it, I started thinking about the uh, bags of dirt that you buy uh -huh. at a big box store, like Home Depot or something like that. And if you weigh that down, that's like about two and a half square feet. That, that and that's would, like 50 pounds. Yeah, that, you but know, you, can get, you can get, but I don't think media that is lightweight. It's got a lot like vermiculite. But, but it absorbs water. And water weighs 8 pounds. That's true. We do. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Right. I'm sorry, okay. Craig. All right, yeah. Mike. Okay. Yeah. We're just very interested in it. Yeah, yeah. No, I, some of us are. Very glad you said that. Thanks for the other choice. That was great. Great. Now, my only question was, you, and what I understood you said, and so I'm just yeah. verifying sure. what I thought you said, was you're talking about, if we do it, it would be two different sections of the roof. Yes. So, if we, the devil's advocate, decided, okay, we'll replace one of the roofs, then we could possibly put it just there, and then at a later date, if the board decides to replace that other roof, then put it there. Well, the two roofs that we're talking about would be replaced at the same time because of the same vintage. Okay. Uh, these are the these are the roofs that are uh, that are 22 years old and are original to the 1998 edition. Okay. Okay. So you know, uh, you know, I think everybody that we talked to um, basically agrees that we're done with those roofs, and they think you know, and they think I need to be. Yeah, if anything, in the next few years. So, well, yeah. like you ought to be planning to replace them. Yes, I understand. Because there's bad facts. Okay, let's move. Let's move. On. All right. Under new business, uh, do I hear a motion to approve the strategic plan proposal from Sarah Keister Armstrong and Associates with a cost not to exceed fifteen thousand dollars? I will make the motion. Do I hear a second? Second. Great. All right, do we have discussion on this motion? Yes, Garrett. Um, I have a question. Um, sure. Sorry to ask you this for the first time, but we did a strategic plan uh, several years ago. Uh, can you call it the cost to us for that? Yeah, it was $25,000. Okay, so this is substantially less. Yeah. Is that because there's less actual? Yeah this, yeah, this is more of an update and not a full blown. Plan process. Okay. So the same company? No, no, different company. Uh, um, but it's it's also that we are doing some of the demographic research here. Um, Cindy has a data task force working on it. Because I just figured, you know, I've got a building of librarians here. Why would I be hiring somebody else to do that kind of research? So so we are do, taking care of that part ourselves. So trying to cut the cost in that way and then doing some of the community uh, conversations ourselves.
and now we didn't do a formal bid process. We did not. I just approached her directly because right. I had seen some of the work that she had done for other libraries, and that looked very much like what we wanted to do. Yeah, I, I, I mean, like I said in my note, I did consider just trying to do it in-house, but I really thought having that consultant with sure. some outside perspective would also be would contribute to the process. So the motion it's is advantageous to yeah. 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 the motion is to approve the fifteen thousand yeah. dollars. I I agree. I like that it's a lot of cinemas, you know, going to the cinemas coming. It's twenty sixteen. So four. Four years. Okay. Four years. <laughs> so we had a presentation by uh, Sarah earlier. Right. Right. Uh, we asked her questions. So is this different? I mean, is this I think that's just a lot different than no. what we were at? This is okay. Yeah. I think she just pulled out the high points of that question wrote before. All right. Carolyn? Um, yeah, I had a couple of questions. Um, her um, strategic plan is identical to what we did last year, or what we did four years ago. And I thought that was interesting that the um, process we follow with Bolin and Bolin is identical to hers. So I'm wondering, is there just a common process that libraries follow? And that's why we have the same focus groups. We're going to try to reach out to the community members just like we did before. So it's pretty much all the same. Um, but it's, it's a little different since we're doing the research and since we're doing the community talking to the community part. But yeah, I think you're right that the structure is basically pretty pretty common to doing it. I mean, it's it's a very traditional way of doing a strategic mm -hmm. plan, and there are places now that do something much different from this. But, um, but I didn't want to start a whole big process at this time. I really wanted to update, because there's still some things from the old plan that we still want to work on. And I thought it was a good foundation, but we really need to go back and talk to the community again. So, well, and, and what I was wondering about is, we have all this data, I thought, from Bolin and Bolin. Do we consider all of that old information? Like, I don't know where all this information was housed. Was it at Bolin and Bolin? Did she share whatever software that was with you? Or are you starting from scratch? And Well, we, um, they did share their results, but we also have a comparable tool that it, um, called Gale Analytics that looks at, at slices oh, of the right. demographics and then it, Cindy has been working extensively with got some training from the census and they do the you know the what's it the Amer American Community Survey is that yes yeah. the, the five-year American Community Survey came out in December um, and so that has updated information and looking yeah. at the different census tracts in the district and trying to pull specific information because the you know like the village of Niles is an entity, but the district is it's cobbled more. together. Yeah. So you have to get even more. I know I was looking at all the the um, reports that have come out, but um, they're either too old or they're the village, and they they don't encompass all that we do. Um, you know, there was one thing I noticed about her presentation. She mentioned that you're going to be handling paper questionnaires and and that you would be mailing them to her. And I thought, wasn't there, couldn't there be an electronic way to get them to her, like uploading it to something or oh, emailing sure. a file? You know, it just seems so, so like out there. I, and, well, and, and I guess what I'm really trying to figure out is, I know you're going to do a lot of the legwork, the community outreach. Who's going to be compiling all the information? Like, she is. Oh, she's going to handle okay. all that. Okay, so that's, okay. And then the other thing was. Carol, I, wasn't that the second part? She had like two main, I think there was a, a 
the outreach yes, part. stage the, two. Right, and then that right. was all the comp comp compilation was the But same. I didn't know she was doing it. She was oh, explaining yeah. what was taking yeah. place, and I thought maybe our staff was doing it. No, that's where the outside perspective comes in. You know, it's oh, like we yes, can gather yes. the information, but the synthesizing it, interpreting it, that needs to okay. be something Okay, else. fine. And, and then my question was, the strategic plan we're in now was set for 2017 to 2021. So when do we think we're ending this one? Well, they said all along it was a three to five year plan and we're in the fourth year of it now. So I think we would be taking that plan and it would be the basis, the parts of that plan that we haven't completed, it, we're gonna be updating that plan. Okay, and that will be the that will go into the, the next one. All right. Unless if we find uh, that there are things that are not relevant to our community anymore, sure. in which case they would drop out. Do do we think that this new one then will be another three to five year plan? Uh, by, yeah, I think I don't think you can do longer than that anymore. Probably. I, I don't even think five years you can do yeah. really. Sure. Well, you know what I was wondering? Would it be possible to get a um a, the strategic plan like a a report of this completed plan to see what in fact the projects were that we did complete and what's still open because we don't have anything concrete to really look at and then it'll give us a better idea of where we're going forward no, I, I definitely will be doing that yeah so is there is there like a start date for the new strategic plan that you have in mind well it depends on if you guys approve it tonight well, what, well, how about when are you going to end the I one we're in now? I think it's an end and start. I think it's a continuation it, they of the yeah. current. To blend them together. Yeah. Right. Well, some of, well, if, but there's well, certain we need, things that were finished and certain that's things That's what I'm saying, yeah. So what's hanging mm -hmm. over? I know we hired, what, there were a couple, th oh, your signage. I know that. Yeah. So I think it, then, Susan, yeah. we'd ask Susan to give us a quarterly update on our strategic plan as the year progresses. I don't remember what that maybe But now it's well. kind of, it should be close to there should be some completion. So we have been right. Well I certainly can give you guys another update. I mean right. that's fine. And then I have one last question. It's fifteen thousand dollars, which is less than the other one, but um, aren't we supposed to have three proposals for the board to evaluate? I mean we just picked one person I am recommending that we handle it this way if the board decides that they want to go through a bidding process we certainly can do that well not necessarily closed bids but why wouldn't we listen to a couple of others I mean I'm trying to figure out why the focus is on her and when I went through her um, strategic plan I felt like it was bowling and bowling so I, I'm you know I'm not real familiar with how these work but I still think According to our bylaws, for fifteen thousand, we should look at more than one. One. It's not according to our bylaws. According to the bylaws, it would be twenty. Uh, it says that for. And, and also, it's not for professional services. That's more for construction and things like that. Well, anything over five thousand. Any that I. Oh, yeah, it's anything it's over a, I have to bring to the board. Mm -hmm. That's the limit. So this one's fifteen thousand. I'm so just I'm saying it to the board. Right. I'm just saying. Wouldn't we want to see um, two others? I mean, and what maybe what are the other options out there? It's up to you. I mean, we have a tendency to just get one document and we, we vote on it. Um, I'm just saying we need to maybe look a little more thoroughly into what what is out there. So that's my I think usually name. we have more than one option. This is the first time I remember there was only one. Well, there's been a few in the past. So I don't remember. Maybe it was when you were on the board and I wasn't. Well, I guess, Karen, I, I, I kind of agree with you on that. I'm a little concerned. I, I know we did talk about it, but and, and I know that this woman is very reputable and has a I've seen her work, yeah. so, mm -hmm. and it seemed like it was in sync with what I wanted. She was going to be willing to carry I, yeah. it out in the way that I wanted to carry it out, and and that she'd be willing to update the previous plan and not have her own, own like, whole different yeah, way of right. doing things. Right. I, and for, you know, $15,000, I think it's pretty reasonable. I heard that 9000 for the first portion of it, I, I was very surprised that she would commit to doing all that effort for just the nine thousand, I would, you know, I thought it was a little. I don't want to give away or send this one. 
I thought the cost was. So I, I actually I do want to open that up to, to the board. So do hey, we want I to? Come? Oh, sure. Thank Go ahead. I'm very familiar with Sarah's work. I um, I know a lot of libraries who have used it very successfully, and it's a really difficult thing to get yep. accurate quality community input. You know, as we've already previously discussed, but she has a record of being um, uh, very successful doing that and particularly working in tandem with libraries when they have um, cooperation of staff helping out with the gathering of data. Um, the other aspect is it is best practices currently in libraries right now to do um, uh, new strategic planning about every three years. The exponential rapid pace of technology changes and cultural uh, changes that are going on uh, require, I think, public libraries to take a hard look at their communities, the demographic changes, the technology needs, et cetera. And um, you know, we, we, it, it takes a long time to gather the data, compile it, and analyze it. And you know, by the time you start to finish, it's like all of a sudden there's all these new different technologies that are available. And, and so it, it really almost has to be a rolling, ongoing type of a process. Yeah, I don't think anybody's, uh, I haven't heard anybody disagree that we need to update our strategic plan. Because clearly that's how we decide on what needs to, to move forward, what needs to be done in the library. Um, the question that is right, open right now is, do we uh, either go for an open bid or at least solicit a couple of more proposals in order to compare uh, between them and the uh, current one we have? That, that's really just the, the question that I'd like to have us decide as a board. Yes, Karen. Um, yeah, so I don't I don't have any reason to think this would do anything because of the bad I you know, she seems like she's so experienced. Um, I do have a question as to whether or not there'd be any lower bids that would be and by bids I don't mean a formal bid, but rather a proposal that would be any lower. I, I don't think we ought to go to a formal bid process, but at most maybe solicit another uh, Proposal, but I, I don't know if we're likely to get anything with much less than fifteen thousand since we paid twenty five thousand yeah, last I agree, time. I agree, but we I don't know. necessarily know. No. Yeah. Okay. I, you know, if people want to go for another proposal, I'm I'm okay with it because you know if it is more than five hundred dollars or five thousand dollars, you know whatever. I, but yes, we do need to do this. Um, I'm very happy with her presentation, and I see that she's worked with, um, as she noted, she's worked with many different libraries successfully, I assume, that we don't know for sure, but according to uh, Sue, you've worked with her, and I'm leaning towards just hiring her, but I will certainly be open if everybody insists to find another. Um, I, I look at it as I want to make sure not only I mean I think the price is extremely fair I also want someone that our staff feels very comfortable in working with and if you already know that that is going to be a symbiotic relationship that too has a lot of um, weight for me um, so I too will We'll look at that um, and also if it dovetails into what we chose four years ago that we did have bids come in that is the type of plan we chose so that doesn't mean we might not want something different but I think for right now for continuing we do need something that is similar that can carry on and then maybe in the next strategic plan see if we need something different but I think for this because we haven't had one in so many years mm -hmm. I think we really need to continue as strong and not necessarily finish but continue what we're doing and and for right now this seems to be for me um, what I've heard and seen um, what I've read um, seems to be like a, a good plan I'm just saying that this 
strategic plan has worked very well for us. It has, and, and, and I really, the process. yeah, I uh, I was really hoping to do something that would kind of just yes. streamline right into what we've mm -hmm. been right. doing and, and be able to do it quickly and effectively yep. and get it done during mm -hmm. a good time frame. And, and to be perfectly honest with you, as you know, I am on a committee this year that involves a great deal of reading, and I was a little bit startled to realize that our strategic plan had to be done in this same year as I ended up on this committee. So uh, I don't have the bandwidth to do sure. something that's a radically different process. And if I and I think you're going to find that the other planners out there may very well be doing things that are very different. I mean, if we did something like based on the Harwood Institute, that would be extremely expensive. I would love to do something I, like that eventually, but I don't think we're there yet. Yeah, I, I would like to just. Right. Get this done. I agree, Susan. Mm -hmm. I understand, and, and I don't think anybody is proposing that we do a radically different strategic plan. I just don't think there are a lot of strategic planners out here that are going to fit our needs. If there were, I would have brought you multiple quotes. But I think this is kind of, you know, somebody that's doing very high quality work in the style that we did last time. The bowlers are not doing it anymore. We can't hire them again. They're doing library planning architectural type stuff. All right, so the question is, do we go get more, a uh, few more uh, at least proposals? However, I will, I hear what you're saying, that you're not sure there are companies out there who will be able to fill the same um, uh, requirements that you've got for the current one. Uh, how, how, let's see, on a, on a scale of one to 10, how strong are you? that if we put this off for a month, asking you to get other proposals, that you could come back with two other ones that are basically the same, but a different cost, or you know, obviously, you, you think that's a... I, I, sure I could come up with something. I, 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 I think you will end up going with her. So to me, I think it's, you know, I think it will either be too expensive or, um, not not the approach that we want at this time. I mean, there are some really cool ways of doing strategic planning now. I just don't think that we're ready for a radical yes, change. We don't, we're, we're not going for a radical change. We have established yeah. we're not going for radical change. Well, and, and let me ask Sue what her opinion, because you know, you've certainly been in the field as well. Do you, I mean, are, and actually, do you we um, are embarking on what we're just calling a strategic refresh, because, you know, and it's not until we go from one building, we do run one to the whole uh, plan, but we did look at a variety of different um, vendors and you know the professionals and um, the individual. We, you know our plan, and it's much less work than this because we're not even involving the community in it. It's really almost an internal process because we're, our community wouldn't give us good feedback at this point. But um, and it, it's about eight thousand dollars is I think the total amount of, and it, it, it's a three month process that we're going through. So comparatively cost wise, um, you know, and it, like I said, the reputation that, that Sarah has is, is uh, well known in, in libraries. Um, I mean, you know, it sounded like your timeline might move a little bit down the line a bit so that you could take more advantage of the warm weather events or something. And you may have another month before you have to make a final decision and start to put the action plan into place. And if it would make others comfortable to take a look and you can just say, here's a couple other people and they don't even come close to what we need or we maybe there's somebody you'll see that will say this you know you guys can compare them or something like that it's, but i'd be happy to say let's go ahead with it right now if everybody else wants. all right let's so have a we sense. just make a motion yeah, to, right. to hire but that is the motion yeah, that's, okay. Okay. that's the current motion the discussion is do we have motion. additional proposals before we decide on this that's our discussion I'm just trying to get a consensus. I'm kind of on the fence on it. I, I do agree that by and large, our process should be we get multiple proposals. However, I'm hearing in this particular case, you have a very strong feeling with this person. We've got people who are experienced in this area. And uh, since we are uh, modifying our current strategic plan, uh, we may be limited in who we find anyway. And it's not overly expensive compared to what the last one was and compared to what she's doing. 
So I'm, I'm, I'm Can like, I just um, make one absolutely, Karen, statement? yes. Um, as trustees, though, we are supposed to be in a position of oversight. In order to do that, that we need to at least look at three proposals. That's true. Yeah. And usually yeah. three proposals aren't that complicated yeah, to come right. across. Yeah. 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 I mean, we can't, we can't just yeah. go with the first thing for a given. We don't really know what's out there. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm just You're feeling absolutely. uncomfortable with not going. All right, that. we're taking a consensus. I'm leaning towards that as well. How many other trustees would like to uh, to, us to get a couple more proposals for next month's meeting? Can I speak? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I would sort of like to get a couple more proposals. I really think that. She will probably be the person we end up choosing. I don't know that for sure. She may well be. Right. I guess I would just like to be reassured that we did a due yep. diligence, that there's not a person who's equally good and maybe choose uh, charges less money. And I'm frankly not in that big of a hurry to do this project. I'm not worried if it's put off a month or something like that. In fact, it might yeah. even help because the more yeah. money it will be stretched over yes. the So I, I'm not, and I don't feel any urgency to move forward with this immediately. And I agree. That's, that's how I feel. Consensus on the board. I agree with that. Great. I'm saying no. Okay. I know. I say just go with them. Okay, we got a no. But we got four yeses, so. so. I, I just have a question. Are, are sure. you guys in the process of hiring an additional staff person that would be involved in community engagement? Yes. So it may be a benefit. But, but it would be a brand new person. She right. So that would say it may be a benefit to, to hold off just a tad until that person comes on board and gets a little bit more sure. their yeah. feet wet in order to be able to add to the staff that are going to be able to help on the project. I just, I, you know, it's just looking at staff, you know, to take on this whole big project and all this data collection, you know, and still continue to keep the same level of service that they have will be a challenge for them. And it may help. Um, Ease it a little bit further and get somebody else up to see. And you can just maybe satisfy those folks that want to just hear, see if there's any other option that might be preferable for it. Mm -hmm. All right, so the consensus of the board is uh, if you would uh, be able to get a couple of more proposals for us to review and discuss for next month's meeting. All right. So, as far as the original motion, uh, we have to go through a formal vote before we just table, table it. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll just table it. All right. Well, thank you for the work, Susan. Uh, we do appreciate it. And additional work, not that Yes. Thank you for the additional work. And thanks, Sarah, Sarah, for coming and talking to us. Okay. All right. Now, do I hear a motion to approve the elimination of overdue fines beginning April 1st, 2020? and permission to clear old fines and charges off of patron cards. Okay. Second. Second. Susan, would you like to review your implementation plan for us? Yes. Uh, and I will mention also that um, in the last couple of weeks, the Skokie Public Library has voted to go completely fine free. They have just been fine free for their children. And Lincolnwood has also voted to go fine free. So it is very much a trend in libraries now. Um, so what we're talking about doing is uh, launching Find Free on April 1st. At that time, uh, or even possibly before, Athena and her crew will be pulling reports on the people that currently have overdue fines on their cards and trying to give people a clean start. So that's part of the purpose of this, is to get people's library cards working again, and then to really publicize the fact that, say, uh, you're, you're talking to a parent and parents have had a bad experience maybe they came to the library they checked out 20 picture books the picture books were late they got charged a bunch of money and fines and so now they're like they're never going to take their kid back to the library again because they're not going to let that happen again uh, we'll be able to start having good conversations about things like that uh, you can come and because you know we've all been there I'm smiling I because the grandparents <laughs> also yes um, so uh, it would be starting, like I said, April 1st, um, and we would be wiping their cards. We would be wiping the, some of the associated fees off of their cards. I considered trying to wipe off all of the lost materials as well and decided that that was, uh, I wasn't prepared to go that far yet. So at this point, I'm only recommending wiping fines. 
Um, and then from that point on, we would be fine free for all of the people that come to the library. I have um, talked with the libraries to whom, the way it works, it's kind of a funny system. If we have a patron, somebody lives in Niles, and they work in Evanston, and I think there actually is somebody that's been doing this. They live in Evanston, they, they make their pickup library Evanston, then we're shipping our books to Evanston, and then if they return their book late to Evanston, it's Evanston's fine, not our fine. So we had a bunch of fines like that. Same with Displains, because we have so many people that actually live physically closer to Displains. So I contacted those libraries, and they have agreed that we can wipe their fines too, so that we will have most of our residents, not the ones that still have lost or damaged things on their cards, but with most of our residents will have a clean start. Is there Parkridge also? Do they still have fines? Uh, Parkridge still does have fines, and she was one of their three libraries that thought that their boards might not be willing to go for this. Okay. Uh, but she was, you know, not sure. And obviously, you know, they're at a certain point, with all the libraries and CCS moving in this direction, now you have the, the problem where somebody from another CCS library returns their their book here. They have to pay us money because they're returning it to us, and we have fines. And uh, so it will, as as more and more of the libraries become fine free, it will just become a much smoother process. So um, I don't know if there's any other information that you need about it, but um, how many outstanding fines do we have about now? It was quite a bit, I thought I it's, it's a great deal of money, but it's going back, you know, decades. So, oh, I mean, you no, it's nothing that we're ever going to get. That's how I felt about the lost materials, uh, too. It's like a lot of them are really, really old. We're never going to see those that stuff again. But, um, but yeah, it, it, yeah. so then we would do a big campaign to encourage people as sort of a spring cleaning campaign. Check your house, find everything you have, because we know there are people sitting out there just are not bringing their things back because they don't want to deal with the fines. So get people to bring their stuff in after we have gone, fine free, yeah. get those all taken care of. So um, give it kind of a, a level playing field there. So if somebody brings back a lost book, what would mark the lost? It'll be, they don't have a fine. Um, well, they lost is different. Lost. Yeah, they it would, yeah, it would come back, that is that is what, how it would work. Yeah, if they brought back something that they've had for so long that we've declared it lost, then yeah, if they bring it back after we're fine free, yeah, they would not have to pay a fine on it. And you know, I think that we have to always go back to why are we here? We're here to serve the public. We're here to make a difference in people's lives and give them the information that they need. And we have a lot of people with really, really old fines on their cards. We have a great many, as you saw in the presentation last month, a great many expired cards with fines on them where people clearly just never, they just said, oh well, I don't, I'm not going to use the library anymore. And then the other part of the process is that the way you get the materials back is if somebody has um, kept something two weeks overdue at the two week point, their card becomes blocked and they can't check anything else out. They won't be able to use databases, things like that. And they won't be able to go to any other library either. It will be blocked throughout. Mm -hmm. So that's how you get your materials back. And that's the libraries are reporting. It's I think there's a very Yeah. No, I think there's a few. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, that's right. Yeah. No, I'm not, people are not going to be particularly happy about that until they get used to it. But, um, but on the other hand, with all these stuff auto, back. Yeah. With the auto renewals, it's, uh, you know, you have a lot of time. Yes, you do. Yeah. So the two exceptions that we want to make uh, at this time are two very high demand items that are a little bit expensive. And those are the Roku's that people can check out and the hotspots. So those would continue to have their fines. How about those uh what have Roku's? The DVD, hold on one second. How about the DVDs uh, that are like only supposed to be out for seven days? Yes. Uh, well, then anything that's got a really short time, yes, it's two weeks after the seven days. If you can't auto renew them, then, okay. or you can't renew them at all, then yes. 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 Yes.
usually quite a few. All right, well, we can go around the table on this one. I, uh, I can start. I, I, I dislike the idea that there are people out there who are afraid to come back to the library. Yeah, and I hadn't really thought that through. Um, if you do have fans out there and you just you want to use it now, you're, you're paying your real estate tax right. for use of the library, but you're afraid to ever come back to the library. That's, that's, if this is one way to get those people to use the facilities that they're entitled to use, and if these fines are, are uncollectible, you know, practically uncollectible, then it doesn't really matter if we get a lot of this stuff back anyway. All right, that's my thought on it. Yeah. Um, yeah, when I first learned heard about this, I really was opposed to it. I thought we need fines to make sure we people bring things back. But given how low the fines are, I don't think there are that much of a deterrent anyway. And the, I think a bigger deterrent is not letting people check out more items yeah. if they mm -hmm. don't bring things mm -hmm. back. Yeah, absolutely. And so the more I thought about it for various reasons, the more I think it is a good idea to go find free. I agree with that. Plus, you know, being at a couple different library activities outside of the library where different meetings where other libraries are expressing how they're dealing with fine freeze, it all sounds very positive. Uh, I'm sorry, that triggered your question, though. Back to, back, back to me. Uh, would we, if somebody is delinquent materials, would we keep them from signing up for a program? Um, if I their don't, card is it, We would have to make all of our programs that you have to put your library card in to do it. And so that would be that would be a question. Um, it, it, it's certainly something that we could do if we found that we weren't getting materials back. If it, we, I would see it more as an escalation. I don't think I would want to do that immediately, okay. but because then you have you know all sorts of people that you know I, I don't know people. Some people don't want people to know who's going to what program, and they, they don't like signing up. And we have and most of the children's programs. Oh, well, are I, I guess anyway. I meant for the yeah. ones that you do have to sign. Yeah, but yeah. there are not a ton of those. Oh, so. But the ones you do sign up for, they usually <laughs> ask you if you are a, a, a library card. Yes, yeah. older, and they'll ask your your information and pull it up. Yeah, and that's a, a, for the small, you know, the programs that only hold ten or twelve people. But almost all of the children's programs are just are uh, registration. Don't have a registration. Oh, yeah. Well, because we found it was kind of worthless. Yeah, no, that's they, fine. I just, I just and then they don't show yeah, up. Yeah, my experience is everyone that I do. Yeah, but but, I, but we could escalate to that certainly right. if we found like, that we needed to. All right. Thank you. I'm sorry, thank you. Um, yeah, I definitely want to uh, go ahead with fine free. I just feel like it's a waste of the time and energy spent collecting fines. Hey, Greg. Yeah, I didn't realize this, but um, what we're doing is we're we're going to eliminate fines. And then we're going to switch to you can't check anything out if you haven't returned your book. So we're not doing that now. No. Well, oh, I mean, thought, eventually, yeah, it, it is, but it takes a lot longer. Okay, but I see what you're saying. So, but we're going to, once because we, I am concerned, no fines, how do we get yeah. everything that's out there? But I did have a couple of other concerns. Um, I'm hearing. And from, even from some of your staff, that we allow large quantities of books and CDs to be loaned as opposed to other libraries in the area, and everybody loves us. So I'm trying to figure out what is the quantity of books that kids are able to check out. Is that a little too large? And especially during the school year, I don't know how many books kids check out, but I guess logically, they don't have that much time to read and things probably do get lost in the house or whatever. But I was just one. I don't even know what our... Well, it, it's the lending regulations that you guys update every once in a while so that everything is spelled out there, how many of each kind of thing that you can have. What's the... Can you remind me? Uh, well, yeah. Unlimited. Pardon me? Unlimited. Unlimited. Yeah, see, things like that may not be a good idea. Well, I will have to be bringing the um, lending regulations back to you if you pass this. So you certainly could look at what the limits well, and, are. And I just, I guess, I guess what I'm, I'm getting at is, you know, kids are excited and they're big home with the whole shopping cart full of books. But logically, you know, 
they are sitting in someone's house and we have all these patrons in the community who could take advantage of those books if we could get them back by not maybe letting them start out with such a large number. Um, and only because I didn't realize that the other libraries around here do things differently than we do, I didn't know that. It, well, I mean, I'm not aware of that actually. I, I, you know, oh. We do have a limit on the DVDs just because it's a smaller supply. But you know, we kind of rely on the parents to take responsibility for what they're willing to take. But we, I think I think we should come up with some sort of parameters. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think just logically, endless numbers can be out of control. Again, you know, the taxpayers are paying for these items, and we should try to get them to as many patrons as possible. Um, we and then a lot of materials to put them to take out. Yeah, it's, and then let's see, um, I do like the amnesty part of what you're going to start. Um, I don't know if that's something you'll be continuing, but I think that's something that we should do repeatedly, you know, like getting people to bring mm -hmm. back books. Well, now that they don't have to pay fines, yes. so, well, how do you get your books back? They won't be able to use their card unless we get the Okay, so that's, all right. And then, and then how do we promote that, like, to happen sooner? You wouldn't have, like, an amnesty day? Well, we could. Um, but then we would be getting a lot of things back before the fine three kicks in. And that I think it's a clearer message if we do it, if we kind of do it in that Oh, no, no. I'm saying, no, go fine free, and then you're going to have yeah. an amnesty thing in spring. But what I'm saying is periodically, maybe do that as well. Well, uh, yeah. I Will mean, that promote more books coming? Or it'll I, be, I, I mean, <laughs> it is an amnesty. It's kind of a permanent amnesty. Yeah, once we have no fines, you there's don't want no fines, that amnesty. amnesty. Okay, and then, all right, you're right, you're right, I, I, yeah, that's true. And then back to your records that show people haven't returned things in a really long time. Um, do we even know if they're still around? I mean, no, we don't. Yeah, I, I'm so, sure that it will it'll enable us to clean up our database so to then, some extent. I was wondering at some point, how do we just clean those records yeah. up? Well, some, things, some records are kind of stuck in the database because they have charges attached to them. You can't get rid of them. So, oh, yeah. I see. so why don't you eliminate the charges? Because, you know, then we can. people could have moved. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I don't know if you have a cross-reference yeah. between yeah. You know, current people, you know, per current right. addresses and stuff. Yeah. Aren't there a lot of people in there? Nightmare trying to hunt down every person. Okay, I, I think those were the only questions I had. I think that the timing is terrific, I think, on this, and uh, get it uh, off and running and publicized before someone really mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. for people and a lot of kids whose families might not have because of that. Yeah. Might be able to join up. Could even say something about spring cleaning. It's playing on the paper, huh? No, I'm saying publicize <laughs> big time for people. All right, great. Right. Diane, would you take a look? I saw Here. some of these. Yes. Carolyn. Yes. Me on some. Diane. Yes. Patty. Yes. Linda. Yes. Tim. Yes. Sue. Yes. Great. Uh, next, do I hear a motion to approve the expenditure of $4,750 with Asset Control Solutions Incorporated for asset inventory services as provided for in their proposal dated December 12, 2019. In addition, the Board of Trustees approved the further annual up services in the amount of three thousand per year. Uh, I can make a motion that we have a second. Uh, Anybody, Patty? Great. Yeah. Susan and Greg, you want to tell us more about the reason for this? Okay. Though we did have a discussion about this at another meeting, but you can update us a little bit more. And we have an updated quote, right? Yes. Yeah, so um, there was a, a sheet of paper that was getting replaced. Uh, there's a new page 67. Uh -huh. uh, the number for the, the uh, first year uh, for asset control solutions was incorrect. And we updated it and updated the five year cost. Um, so, um, our auditors, Waterbach and uh, Aiden, uh, made a suggestion that we have a uh, inventory of our fixed assets uh, in the facility. Uh, this uh, this work is this activity is in response to that suggestion. Mm -hmm. um, I was able to get uh, three different firms 
to uh, you know to uh, talk to me. Um, one firm, uh, Asset Works USA, uh, after they talked to me, felt that it was a bad fit for their company, and they backed out. So we have we have two full proposals uh, in front of you. Um, essentially, what what they will do is uh, identify and tag all of our uh, assets at $500 and above. Uh, generally, not generally, but according to policy, we capitalize on our financial statements, those items which have an individual cost of $2,500 and above. They would go below that for the purposes of asset uh, <coughs> control and, and insurance purposes. Um, uh, the, uh, the difference in, uh, in the bids is, you know, is nominal as you look at it over five years until you consider the fact that uh, CBIS valuation would charge us $1,000, but we put all of the information onto a spreadsheet and send it to them, and then they put it onto their system. Um, as opposed to asset control solutions, which would actually come out and do an update, basically an update uh, inventory, identify assets that are gone, hold us accountable for assets that are missing, and then upload to their system and provide us new lists. So that's why there's more? Um, yes. Because they're actually out here doing yeah. the label. Yeah. Uh, they did do, um, they did do a, uh, uh, a lighter option at $650, which was analogous to a $1,000 option for, for CBIS uh, valuation. So, um, you know, uh, what have we been doing for the last 20 years? You know, uh, the assets that we have are readily identifiable. You know, we have obviously the building, you know, which isn't going to go anywhere, it's not going to disappear or, or be trimmed. Oh, sorry, the van, yeah. Uh, you know, if Dave opens the garage and the van is gone, or you know, an employee is out driving the van and never comes back, we kind of know this. Um, all of our uh, all of our shelving is uh, pretty stable and in place. Um, can, can I ask you just a quick question? You said that they value items that are over $500 in value, is that yeah. right? So are they looking at like table separately or I mean, I mean I'm trying to figure out I mean obviously they're not buying the books if or if they're looking at each book. No. Well but, but we already but in terms of the books, yeah. we already have an extensive inventory system okay. called the uh, uh, the IOS, the uh, yes, yeah, the integrated library system. So you know if you say where are these books, I know that you have one and she has one and you know Tim has a lot of them because he took advantage of the unlimited books uh, part of the uh, lending policy. And I knew we were going to get rid of things. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, uh, I know what's on the shelf. I know what I sent to another library to be taken and picked up by a patron. You know, we know all of this information about all 300,000 books that we, uh, right. that we have. We, we already know that. I, um, I guess the question is, do we know the dollar value of that? And even if we don't know that, are they going to tell us that, or are they not? They're not valuing books anyway. They're not. No, they, they're not going to. So touch they're not going to tell us that information. Yeah, either. and that's. They're just looking at larger things. Yeah. So, for example, if you look around this room, uh, the chairs that are around the perimeter are not five hundred dollar chairs, so they don't. Pick them. Each one of them. Individually, this chair right here. I believe they were eight. Each chance. I don't believe that. Well, I was going to say a couple of <laughs> He said the perimeter. Oh, the process. Perimeter. No, the perimeter. Oh, those, yeah. oh, no, 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 those are not. Yeah. These are. Um, you know, those, um, those carts um, that you see all over the library full of books, they're not, uh -huh. you know, they're not going to meet that threshold. Uh -huh. You know, I mean, if, you know, as you push down, things are going to go, costs are going to, you know, skyrocket. Um, all of our computers is, you know, as, as I was going through some of the larger items, all of our computers are uh, rich tracks by CPU. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he knows where every laptop is, and he knows where every desktop is, he knows where every printer is, he knows where, you know, every scan, 
fairness machine, you know, that we just bought, whether it's for the patrons or it's for the staff, he knows where those items are. Mm -hmm. um, anybody in any department can walk in their department and if, you know, furniture is missing or something okay. like that, the call goes out, hey, where's my okay. So, uh, so the, they say, I believe the um, recommendation was to do this for two reasons, insurance and control purposes. So it sounds like the control first versus we already have better control of all the items in the library that we yeah. never get from hiring these I don't think this, that, right? I don't think it has from the control purposes. All right. What about insurance purposes? Does this help us for insurance purposes? Or can we, if, you know, let's, let's say God forbid the entire library burns down uh, and that we need to collect insurance. Do we have adequate documentation of the value of the items that we have that worth that are worth more than $500 to establish an insurance plan. Yeah, yeah, um, you know, that's, uh, that's all proven through, uh, you know, the receipts that we have. Okay. And as a matter of fact, that we store off-site at Iron Mountain. So, uh, you know, and, and I just want to say, the library's not going to burn down. Uh, I, I, but I, that's not. Uh, let's say you're on vacation. But that's not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Um, um, uh, if, if, if we're hit, you know, by a major catastrophe like that, we have the records in storage off-site that we can recall and we can, uh, and we can reconstruct. Um, our insurance coverage, um, is at what I meet, you know, with our, uh, with our representatives every year, right about at the time, and, and we go through all the different things and we look at the changes you know, and, and so forth. And I think we're adequately insured to... Uh, adequate documentation of uh, uh, that in order to collect insurance should we yeah. need to. Yeah. Okay. You know, I don't have a list of staplers. No, you know, no, but uh, they're, they're not counting staplers either. They're yeah, only counting yeah. large items. It's That's right. Because if they were to do it, That's right? right? So, the main reason we were going to do this is because they have firm suggested this. Yeah, that's the only reason. So we don't have any history requirement to no. do this periodically? Yeah, um, okay. So if this was something to do for transparency, as far as keeping the records of your assets? Uh, um, I guess what I'm, what I'm saying is that, you know, we in fact do have records. You know, I mean, they're not in, they're not in the uh, uh, seized business. Or no, they are not. Spreadsheet or? They are not. Um, items over twenty-five hundred dollars are, in fact, in um, in a uh, in a system in a database. You know, uh, but you know, some of them are grouped by large purchase. You know, we bought fifteen of these things for two hundred thousand dollars or something like that, and then you know we would you know we would show. We would show those different <coughs> things as a group, not individually identified or in tagged. You know, but we do have those uh, records, and those databases, by the way, are maintained off-site. It's it's a it's an external uh, service. Mm -hmm. You know, the stuff between twenty-five hundred and five hundred. You know, all of these chairs on the mm -hmm. perimeter. You know, that flip chart. You know, you're not going to find it. But, no. Yeah, but we have you know things like well, photographs. These chairs, would you have these? Because these are eight hundred. She said. Yeah. The, uh, I mean, would you have that? Uh, in all likelihood, uh, when these were purchased, no. uh, when these were purchased for the uh, renovation, mm -hmm. we made an addition of this furniture purchase. So do you tag anything? Or? No. No. But this company would. Yeah. And that's how they would come back and scan the tags. Mm -hmm. I have a couple of questions. Um, Greg, what type of databases are off-site and for what purpose? Um, the uh, Blackboard system is a dial-in system, so all of that, uh, they, all of those databases associated with the Blackboard uh, system are housed, I believe, in a, in a data center in Boston. And they maintain receipts? No, no, they maintain the database. Of? 
our stuff, our databases. Our stuff. You just mentioned to Trustee Olson that information regarding items is on a database off-site. So I'm trying to figure out what you. So we have a fixed asset module, mm -hmm. and that fixed asset module is part of Blackboard. And what fixed assets are part of that module? Um, all of the assets that we've identified that meet the capitalization threshold, at least since I've been here, you know. And Meaning over 2,500? Mm -hmm. So we already have that information? Yeah, but it's not, it's not individualized. It's not tagged. There are some things, like these chairs, that they're, you know, if their cost is $800 a piece, um, strictly speaking, I understand uh, that, uh, so just so you don't have to repeat yourself. So this database is what, a list of just anything? And if there was a fire, you'd have to try to find everything? I mean, it's not in some sort of organized format for inventory. It's just a database that apparently has all sorts of information? Um, it has, um, as I was saying, these $800 chairs would not actually mm -hmm. make it into the database if we bought it individually. But since we bought... I don't know what's around the table, 10 or 12 okay. or something. All right, I got it. Excuse me, I'm, I'm talking to the rest of the uh, mm -hmm. trustees. If they, mm -hmm. you know, so that well, I thought you already it. said that. I just want to get my questions out. So and, go right ahead. And and let, I want to know the answer to it. Thank you. Um, so uh, if, if we bought all of these chairs and we paid you know, $20,000 in the aggregate for it, that $20,000 is on uh, that database uh, <laughs> with a date a vendor, uh, an in-service date, uh, the, you know, straight line depreciation from the date of in-service and, and so forth. So it gives us a pretty good roadmap in terms of, okay, so what was in this room? Well, we know what was in this room was, you know, from this, from this purchase uh, made at this time during the renovation. And then we can backtrack that to receipts that we can you know, prove our purchase to uh, our insurance carrier. So is the recommendation from the auditors that we take this on this process um, because the current system that we're using, although it's, you know, it's helpful, it's not as robust as something that would be done professionally like this in the case of a catastrophe or other reasons why we need yeah. to know what the assets are? You know, um, you know, the, this is uh, this is an easy find uh, for an auditing firm, and um, if we had, for example, multiple locations and we had a fleet of a hundred vehicles, and and in those multiple locations that you know you had people that were buying equipment but not putting it on the books, and you know, and your equipment costs were going up and so forth, you know, it could be problematic. And, so, and a system like this would be very valuable to, you know, make sure you say, you know, um, Warrenville office has 25 computers, but there's only five people that work there. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, you can start to track and, and diagnose uh, problems and find mm -hmm. solutions and so forth. Um, you yeah, know, we're uh, very small by comparison. Um, you know, if there's a department, uh, like Sasha's department, um, if they walk in and anything is different, they know. Yeah. So, you know, you'll, you'll get an email that says, you know, bring back my cart. <laughs> you know, I mean, I can't tell you. Yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't imagine how many bring back my cart emails that I have. No. <laughs> you know. um, but it's common, you know, because people walk in and they do a visual check and, you know, they know what belongs in their department. It's, okay, the, sense I, I'm, I just want to finish up. the sense I'm getting is that you're not necessarily indicating to us that this is vital for us to get this accomplished. Yeah, I think that's true. Okay. Okay, so if I could please finish. Um, I believe the auditors wrote in their management letter that we do not have a documented inventory process and we needed to create that along with tagging our capital assets. That was their terminology. But what I want to bring out is, um, according to these two companies, they are definitely selectively choosing items that they plan to inventory, which isn't going to give us 
a complete inventory of the library's assets. Now, I, I don't agree with the fact that a department head could walk in their department and notice if someone takes a desk or a chair. I think all the items in the library should be inventoried, maybe by department, since you find their cost to be so minimal, or under 500, that you shouldn't inventory them. But when there's a fire, or if you need to prove what you own, you should already have a documented inventory process. And like I said, it's not that complicated where someone in a department could identify what they have, they could come up with their own tagging system, but every item in the library should be inventory. And yes, there should be um, depreciation for the, the larger cost items and so forth and so on, how that's done. But I don't think we should be picking and choosing what we choose to inventory. Inventory is a necessary process. And it sounds like the two companies we've picked are going to pick and choose. But the fact of the matter is what we already have is not a documented process like the auditors expected us to have. And they also expect us to tag our items. And Rich may know about where his computers are or how many he has, but they should all be inventoried and tagged. And that information should be in a database that's readily available here. Well, that's just my sure. comments on inventory. Okay. Yes, go ahead. Uh, Carolyn, because I'm not sure I understand what you're saying. Are you saying you think there should be an inventory, but that the proposals here aren't adequate? Is that, is that what I'm hearing you saying? It sounds like these proposals are picking and choosing, and so, this library is still going to be filled with items we're not inventory. So, okay. So, I, I thought that's what you said. Oh, okay. You don't really like these yeah. proposals in any event. Is that well, right? at least that's how I'm reading them, okay. unless I'm okay. wrong. No, okay. no, 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 Right. But I did have yeah, one too. question. Did I misread? I thought one of these companies said that they were going to take our inventory spreadsheet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Both of them would do that. So it's we... not created. So that's the one where you're saying isn't created. You would have to create that no, for. No, we have we have uh, a fixed asset module through Blackboard, mm -hmm. and uh, they would take that as a starting point, and. Uh, you know, and build it from there. There is an old, old, old uh, database uh, in Access from several years ago, um, which I think is very stale at this point, uh, and they would look at that as well. But I don't think that would yield uh, very much help them. So they're not, they're not something you would, I mean, if they're that old, do you, do you even know if all, that, all those items are still here? Well, you know, the, some of the things are like, uh, you know, ninety-eight dollars for a uh, you know twelve hundred baud modem. You know, I doubt that that's still floating around. Yeah, those yeah. might not be useful. Then. Okay. So does uh, black baud uh, identify location of an asset? Oh, we can. Can the dollar amount be modified? If Certainly. you wanted to do like the two hundred dollar level or whatever level you want. Well, it you know it'll take whatever you put into it. Got it. So if you want to start at you know sure. plus uh, you know over you know greater than zero, sure. uh, you can do that. Sure. So um, it almost seems to me like we could use that module. Well, we can. The um, uh, you know the challenge is finding the time to do it. Absolutely. We had a full time person that did sure. this twenty years ago. Sure. Was sure. it twenty years ago? Yeah. Okay. Well, um, um, myself. So what was I'm the leaving. last? Did you add to this module? Yeah. It, Every year. Okay. I look at all of our, you know, I look at all of our asset uh, purchases and I identify the ones that are over the threshold. Okay. And uh, you know, and then I, uh, you know, go ahead and enter them into the. Uh, I mean, you could kind of back to Carol. I'm sorry, back to Carolyn's kind of point. You could ask each department manager to spend a month uh, looking at their assets, gathering them all, putting them in a spreadsheet, and putting assigning somebody a, a year-long task to put them in uh, blackboard if we well, want to. Sure. Well, yeah, make a threshold, you know. Right. No, I absolutely not. Is Blackboard the way to go, though? 
I don't know. I'm just saying, since we're already paying for that, yeah, it seems like we could probably okay. use that. You know, a lot of the just systems, throwing that. Yeah, why invent the wheel? A lot of the systems it? that um, you know these companies use are pr proprietary. Oh. Um, but you can buy something off of that or off the shelf. Well, I'm I'm leaning against it, but uh, you know, against what? Against yeah. purchasing the yes, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Sounds like we're not. It's not essential. And the insurance company is satisfied. Yes. Yeah. All right. Let uh, unless anybody else, let's we can take a roll on this. Okay. Um, well, we never. Well, we never had a roll. We never had a motion. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I said yes, I did. I what said was can the I motion? Have a motion. Motion. Do I hear a motion to approve the expenditure of forty-seven fifty okay. for well, the asset well, I, I don't know what to talk about that. But... I think oh, actually, I made the motion, and yeah. I think uh, I Patty it. seconded it. Okay, so it's ten. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Not to vote. To vote. Karen. Oh uh, no. Carolyn. No. Diane. No. Patty. No. Linda. No. Tim. No. No. Great. All right, I need a motion to approve the proposed salary increase of 3.3% for raises awarded during the 2020-2021 fiscal year. Uh, do I hear a motion on this? Just to discuss it? So to pro no, approve the proposed approve salary. Approve to discuss and then we no, discuss not it. approve to discuss. <laughs> approve to propose. So oh, approve okay. the proposed salary increase. Okay. After we motion and second, then we can discuss. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I approve. Second. You second. Or you're you're, you're making, making the motion. Motion, motion. whatever. Right. Somebody yeah. seconded, please. Second. Aaron, uh, yeah. Linda seconded. <laughs> All right. Uh, Susan and Gray, can you tell us how you arrived at this particular figure? Thank you. So I'll just quickly cover it and everybody jump in. Um, every year, Gray finds out what the CPI is going to be, so the cost of living increase. and this year it is going to be, or for next year, it's going to be 2.3%. Um, so if you recall what we've been doing with raises for the past two years, I think it is, is that staff gets a baseline raise of whatever that cost of living increase is. So the baseline for this year would be 2.3%. And then the last couple of years, you have given me an additional 1% to allocate uh, for merit increases. So that, you know, some people might get an additional 2.2 and some people might get, a, you know, 1.2. So, but the total amount of the salary line increase would be 3.3. And we are going to achieve it this time because we like to have this in place if we're building the budget. Because it's this is, you know, salaries are a big part of the budget. Did I miss anything? So, why I'm a little confused on this. Why? Wouldn't this have been increased when we passed our last budget? It was. Well, it was last year. It's for the upcoming budget. It's for 2021. It's not me. No. This will be for the 2020 2021 fiscal year. That's what the budget is. And I know I'm being dense on this. Wouldn't we want to approve the budget first? And then approve the well, salary increases. But this is a component. It's a big budget. component of the budget, so yeah, this is probably one of the biggest. I, I understand, yeah. but why wouldn't this be part of our overall budget discussion? It's entirely up to you. It's just how we did it last year. Is that how we did it last year? It and isn't this coming up like next month? It is coming up within a couple of months, month? two months. Yeah. yeah. So. So so to, yes. Uh, uh, just because. Uh, the board is, is making um, making the motion and considering passing this does not mean that before the budget is passed ultimately that this is completely off the table. So what I want to do is is use this to generate numbers for the budget relative to salaries. If at some point, you know, April, uh, April meeting, which I think is the April 15th meeting, if I'm not mistaken, um, what will happen is you'll take a look at it and either you'll say we need to do something about the salary line or we don't. Okay. Okay. And then as a board, you can negotiate that. Okay. Um, at the end of the day, whatever the board decides at whatever point in time before the 
before the uh, budget and appropriation levy is uh, submitted and passed and sent to the county, um, the board can make whatever changes it uh, deems necessary. Is everybody understanding that? Mm -hmm. I'll refer to you because it still seems a little fuzzy to me. Well, I, mean, I think this, this is our largest component of our budget, the largest single expenditures is salaries, because it's just sal salaries is you know, yeah, absolutely. what we need. Yeah, I agree with that. And uh, so I think it sort of tells our staff this is what we anticipate the biggest component will be. And, and that's kind of close to the budget around that. That's the way I see it anyway. And this would not go into effect until our next fiscal year, July 1st. Uh, so it gives a little time oh, okay. to so start okay. preparing that. Um, that's how I see it. Thank you. I, you know what? I, what I wasn't catching is July 1st. I, I, I saw 2020, 2021, but I just didn't catch July 1st. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think I'm getting, uh, what do they call it, sundown syndrome? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do. All right, I'm sorry. Uh, Karen, anything on this one? Um, no, so you uh, proposed the 3.3, that's on the current budget of 3.5 million of salaries, is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and so that would be an additional 58,000, mm -hmm. about that. Okay. And is that uh, taking into account uh, turnover, or not, not really? No, it doesn't. Because um, with turnover, it, there are salaries tend to go down. Yes. Because, of course, we're always hiring people and opening salaries. I can seem to remember in past years that even though we granted salary increases, our total salary increase did not really go up because higher salary people left and they were replaced by lower salary people. So this uh, this year is a good uh, example of that. When we were in, the, in budgeting for the current fiscal year, mm -hmm. year over year, the, the uh, salaries increased, uh, salary line increased by $5,000. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we had a 3% overall raise, uh, which I estimated at the time we uh, the board considered it to have an impact of 54,000 in the in the current fiscal year, but we have, as you said, we have turnover from time to time. Um, sometimes what happens is when you have turnover, it takes time to replace that person. So we actually don't see a salary being paid while we're searching for the replacement. In addition to the fact that, generally speaking, we hire a, a lower starting salary. Okay, so as I look at this, 3.3 equals more than 58, 3.3% of 3.5 million is more than 58,000. So is that 58,000 taken into it? Does that take into account your expected turnover savings? No. What, uh, the reason that number is less, you know, 3.3 3 times uh, 3,000 uh, or 3,500 is like something 115, like 115,000. Yeah, 100, I was going to guess 110, but I'll take your 115. Okay. So what happens is, what happens is the um, uh, everybody gets reviewed on their anniversary date. You get uh, people that have a seven one one anniversary date. So some people have to wait almost a whole year. That's right. Okay. So you know if you feather it in Forget based that. on anniversary dates. Right. Yeah, you did explain it once before. Yeah, I forgot yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I think that. Uh, Okay. The one I can understand the two point three because it's cost. I can totally deal except there. The one percent is not does not mean that's what you'll shoot for. As far as oh, if this guy is super fantastic, I'm going to give him two percent or something like that. You know, to make up. Well, you are planning on that kind of stuff, are you? Well, I mean, the way it works is that there is a merit increase form that the supervisors fill out, and people get boxes checked for particular things where it is a behavior I am trying to encourage mm -hmm. on behalf of the library. So parking at Culver is a thing that if somebody parks at Culver or does not drive, they get a check for that. If somebody has saved the library uh, more than $50, 
a year, they get a check for that. If they have contributed to a patron-centered culture, they get a check for that. And so then I, I count those points up, and some people kind of don't go the extra mile, and they don't really get any extra points, and so they might just get the, for this year, the 2.3. Um, but other people will have checked off a whole lot of boxes. They'll have become a passport agent, and they'll have you know, done all kinds of things, and they have done a great deal, and those people might get, and somebody particularly earlier on in their career might get, you know, 3.5 or even 4% of very, very few people at the very top. So that there's a little bit of a spread that way. So nobody gets below the baseline. <coughs> only a very few people get up, yeah, get up way above. Mm -hmm. And then uh, and then a lot of people are kind of in the, in the middle range. And because of um, a certain amount of attrition and things like that, I'm able to give people enough of a, of a merit increase that it feels like it's real for them. So, but my thing is, like she was saying, the likelihood of you getting up to this amount that's stated isn't necessarily going to be the case. It, you know, it might not get up that high. Yes, yeah, why not? Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. Um, did, you, did you say yes, sometimes, Greg, that <laughs> this is not in stone? Or well, I mean, it, until the board actually uh, accepts, passes, and we file the, uh, uh, the uh, budget and appropriation ordinance, mm -hmm. anything could be changed. Yeah. Okay. okay, so this Between is... Between now and so on. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, yeah, essentially. Yeah. Usually yeah. isn't that by June that we do that? Yeah, it's the June meeting. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you look at the total budget and you say, well, I'm just not comfortable with where we are here, and you have to start making sure. adjustments, this is a place that you could look. Mm -hmm. I'm on this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so I, I was reading this documentation and you mentioned that in 2021, I guess property taxes will be going up to 2.3% and in consideration of our raises, we're talking a total of 3.3, which is the 2.3 plus the 1%. Um, I, I have to say that I think between the raises and the increase in real estate taxes, that's a bit of a hit for the residents because seriously, a lot of them are governmental employees and they don't automatically just get a cost of living raise. It, it's much less. But in terms of discussing salary increases now, I think we should consider our total, our total benefit package all at once, including salaries with insurance and all the other benefits that are employees receive before we talk about what we're going to increase because I think when it comes to employees total compensation is a bigger number and um, in, in order to adequately give raises you need to know what you're spending with IMRF or what your insurance costs are going to be and I'd rather see us look at all of the compensation at once and then decide what we want to do with the raises. I'm just not familiar with this process of approving that prior to taking a look at the entire budget. And I understand putting the budget together, but couldn't you just plug that number in and then once we get a look at the whole budget, then we can determine what's the advantage right now if we approve it, if we can actually later on say, we change our mind. I mean, I, I'm not sure why this is a, an approval process at this point. That's a question I was, do you agree? Oh, I'm sorry. It, well, <laughs> it, I mean, nobody is. No, I mean, I'm just it. curious as to why you decided to do it this way, because I haven't seen it. Um, so what we uh, what we try to do at this meeting in particular uh, over the last several years is put this in front of the board, 
to let them, uh, to let all of you know what the uh, current thinking is and uh, let you react to it. And uh, you say, yeah, go ahead. You know, we'll, you know, plug two point, I'm sorry, three point three percent into the calculation and and uh, derive a number. And um, if at some point later the board says, no, I think one point three is better, or two point three is better, or nothing is the way we should go, then those, uh, you know, make sure that those variables get plugged in accordingly, and and uh, you know, we'll have a new number. I think it's in a sense it's taking the temperature of the board to see yeah. kind of where you are with this. Uh, yeah, it's a largely uh, socialization uh, process. Mm. But it's you know it's useful to us. It's um, you know we kind of get a better sense of where we are. Well, I think I think it probably also helps you because if you if you think you're going to work with, we're going to approve this, then you can start figuring out for all the employees who gets what too. So you get, and then you get time. Well, it's kind of more on a rolling basis. Yeah, but you have some right after. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Absolutely. Yeah. You're going to make a decision on that. Yeah. Hmm. All right. I think we can. Well, yes, that is another reason. Just because the board did use to approve the budget later. You don't have to approve it until like August, and that is when it used to be. Yes. And you guys just like to approve it earlier before the budget year. I've always thought it makes sense to approve it before you yes. start. Before you answer the year, and I know that yeah. by statute we could do it later right. on. It never but made I sense just to never really like that, that yeah. uh, right. notion. Uh, I think the village approves it in August too. Yeah. 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 Sure. All right. Um, uh, I think we can take a vote on this unless anybody else has anything to say. So. So with the one person over, um, so just so I'm clear, so based on the checkpoints that are on that sheet, they could um, someone could get a 0.5 percent, somebody yep. else can get a 0.1, and it's all very calculated, and it, there's some so it's kind of a little bit more objective than subjective. It it's trying to weigh that. Yeah, I mean, there's still a little bit of finessing well, into it, right, but yeah, right. it's trying to be a little bit. We're trying better. to be a little more, yeah. you know, where, so that right. you're, there isn't, what was the right word? Hmm. Favoritism. Right, right, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's giving great, people, I mean, I mean, to me, it's like, I'm getting great things people, out of this. Right. Yeah, it's, it's people, so I mean, it's, you know, yeah. people can it, it is giving them, you know, concrete ways to improve right. and, and what they're doing. I think your leaders a way to recognize, you know, by getting that list. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. I, because my question was, is it better to do it that way than doing a flat? But I do like it better that way because then it it, it does show mm -hmm. points and growth and persistent and and. Okay. Recognition. Shows recognition. Yes. So. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I know where you come from with the flat. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's just take a look. Okay, Karen. Yes. Carolyn. Um, I'm going to abstain. Diane. Yes. Patty. Yeah. Linda. Yes. Tim. Yes. Sue. So, yes. So I think this next one is just if we were the physical schedule, right? Because you just yes. okay. And also that the more heavy the factor is, the increase to in the minimum wage. Okay. All right. Do I hear a motion to move the proposed changes to the salary schedule? I can make a motion. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay. Great. Uh, so, are there any? Yeah. So substantially, what is different between this and what we had just talked about? So um, this is the uh, salary grade pay ranges, and what we talked about previously was the you know the raise program for individual raises. Okay, so um, over the past uh, several years, what we've done is we've taken the existing salary grades and we've increased them by the rate of inflation by CPI um, over, those, over those years. Last year we did this, uh, and we did it as a catch-up for two years. I, 
the one I don't remember specifically. I'd have to look back, but I think it was close to six percent. Uh, ah, yes. Okay. Yes, so right. you know, yeah, when, we had a, right. We had to get the range. Right. And when you have jumps yes. like that, Correct. you know, um, you know, it does, uh, yep. you know, create some issues in management yep. and so forth. Yep. Yep. Um, so what we're trying to do is smooth the process to do. What we're trying yep. to do is to do it on a regular basis. Yep. Right. I understand. Um, I, I think I understand this at first. Does it relate to anyone in particular? It just relates yep. to the ranges that are available. For those positions. So, is the lowest, the lowest hourly rate um, for patron services associate three? Is that right? Correct. Yeah. $10. $10 an hour. Yeah. To conform, with to conform with the only law. Right. Okay. And are you talking about raising it again the following year? Mm -hmm. uh, actually, um, the progression is on January 1st. Mm -hmm. It goes up from $10 to 11 mm -hmm. And then 12 13 14 15 for each six, uh, each following mm -hmm. January 1st. Yeah. I can't remember. It's 125 right? Okay. So we've started looking at that, but we, you know, we sure. can't get into the details of that, but we do are trying to plan out how to keep it from getting all smooshed at the bottom. That's the technical term. So, <laughs> so, I, so I don't know, is there anyone who, and I don't, I don't want to call a name or anything like that, but do we have people who are, what are our patron services people paid right now? Associates, three, what are they paying right now? I think it's the nine point. $9.25 is the bottom of the rate. Nobody's actually getting paid up right now. Because that position is almost being eliminated at this point. Okay. All right, I guess what I, was, I wanted to ask is, if there's anyone in the lowest paying job, is giving them a 2.3 raise going to put them at at least minimum wage? No, because uh, the increase from uh, 9 and a quarter to 10 is more than 2.3%. So if we're paying them 925 and we raise them 2.3 uh, 2 or 3.3 percent, uh, we're we're raising them a quarter, yeah, it's not mm -hmm. or something like that, as opposed to 75 cents where you see the uh -huh. the jump yeah. from the previous so, low so, to the new low. So yeah. some people are going to have to get more than a 2.3 percent increase yeah. Yeah. to yeah. make them minimum wage. So. Uh, have you figured that into your salary projections, or are there so few people, yeah, so few people. in those spots that it will make a It'll make a difference in a, a couple years down the road. When we've had to push up all of the other levels to stop up for being compressed at the bottom. Uh -huh. um, but for this year, it's not going to make a difference. There are only two people in the associate yeah. three level. Everybody else is a, is a two or higher. Okay. okay. Sure. That's what I was going to say. I did. I did. <laughs> uh, is this will, what you're proposing, or what we just approved, will cover this? Yeah. There'll be enough to cover that. That's fine. Because there's only two people, you said? That's fine. Thank you. No question. Sure. Yeah, I have a general question. The higher the number, the lower the, the higher the grade, the lower the salary. Yeah, it's just the way it was set many, many years ago. I know, ago. I'm just, because I'm getting confused. So the higher the grade, those are the lower people. So the smaller the number, okay, got it. staff raises was really to help the staff at the bottom who don't seem to really make enough or their increases don't really 
do much for them. Instead of, it seems that people at the top get more, get a larger increase instead of our lower paying staff. Is there, is there any interest in trying to do something about that? I mean, and maybe that's that one percent that you know somebody did those things you mentioned and, and they get that. But what about these people at the lower end of the scale? I mean, they, they don't seem to get anywhere. But well, won't they be eventually getting up to fifteen dollar an hour yeah. Yeah, in five years? Right. Well, and well, somebody's making you know. ninety grand now. I mean, you know. Well, I mean, well you can't compare ninety grand person to somebody that's no, not clerk. No, their job expectancy. <laughs> education. Well, you you do want people to get out of. You want them to make minimum wage. Yes. And they're, they're going to. That's the Legally, plan. they have to. Well, that's the, also good the minimum's nine twenty-five is what you propose. So What's we're proposing we're proposing ten dollars. And that's, 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 oh, that's right. I'm looking at the wrong scale. That's what, right. If we were hiring somebody brand new, that's what they would come in at. But we're not actually hiring anybody in that category anymore. We, we started hiring at Associate 2, and then we added the level of Associate 1. So uh, two. is that number, I'm sorry, 5.5? Five 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 it's five. not going to be a 3. No? Eventually, there will be a 3. And I think as the years go by, that'll naturally push up the salaries of right. the Associate 2 and Associate 1 also yeah. just because minimum wage is going to go past yeah. their current salaries but also because it tends to push everything up. <coughs> mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, but otherwise it, you have compression yeah. salaries. So. Right. But that 5.5 was the trying to get some of the people up into a little bit of a higher pay range and mm -hmm. because they, you know, in recognition of the hard work that they've done. Um, and then uh, we did that also with the assistant supervisor. But yeah, I mean, I totally take your point. I mean, a 3% increase on Greg's salary is a whole heck of a lot more money than it's a 3%. It's a real lot of money. <laughs> it's like, yeah, come on. for a shot. Yeah. He's, like, no, just, he's just like that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Let's Sorry about that, Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you get a service salary. It's like, no. It's me. All right, we're moving on. We do have a budget. We have budget meetings coming up, and we can discuss all this. Yes. All right. I need a motion to approve payment to Visiographic in the amount of five thousand six hundred sixty-nine dollars and ninety cents. Motion. Second. Great. Uh, this sorry. is. This was Sue so, made the motion, and Diane made the second. No, Linda. Linda. I'm sorry, Linda made the second. So. Boy. All right. This is for the February. Mark, tell me about February March <laughs> newsletter. All right. Any discussions on this? Any brief discussions on this? Anybody? No. I, I did have a quick question. Girl. Are we anywhere near um, that point when we're going to reevaluate if increasing these publications was beneficial? Has it been a year? <coughs> no, June is when it's a year. Oh, is it? Okay. Great. Anybody else? No, oh, great. Can I take a roll? Karen? Yes. Carolyn? No. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. Sue? Yes. Great. For the next item, as you know, as you all know, we agreed that if a trustee plans to attend a conference, they have the option of requesting the board approval before the conference, so when they put in for their approval of reimbursements, there is no question. Linda Ryan noticed that the early bid registration date is coming up and wanted to get approval to attend the ALA conference here in Chicago this summer. Does anyone else want to be added to this motion? Okay, All right. well, actually I do. Karen does. Yeah. Patty does. Do we have to pay for like the whole amount or is there a day, like if we want to go one day, like when yeah, they have trustee day? There is a single day rate. Right? I don't think we can register for you for it. Yeah, on the calendar I have those at the bottom here. So the early bird registration rate is uh, coming up in March 14th, and that's for the full conference. There's, uh, but honestly, if you register for one day, it's $170. So you If you all register for the whole conference, yeah. it's 195 So, so it, what I, difference? Yeah, yeah, I would definitely do the whole conference, and then you can go to any of the sessions and do whatever you want to do. Okay. Thank you for being alert to create the Absolutely. Thank you, precious. 
I have a, a, a question <laughs> only because uh, this is obviously a decision or something that was discussed before I was a member yes. of the board. If you make a budget and you have a budget allocation for trustees to attend conferences, why would it need to be approved? Uh, I can answer this. Sure. Let's hear because, it. Because uh, there was an Illinois statute that expenditures, trustee expenditures, have to be approved by the board. But if the budget is approved. Uh, that's just approving the budget. But the actual expenditure has to be approved so that if you spent money for something that the board had to consider, <laughs> And then came to the board and say, "I want to be reimbursed for this," and the board said, "Ha ha! I'm sorry. Yes, so, you know, we're not going to, you know, then you'd be out the money because we haven't approved it." So, so you approve it in the budget. We approve budget amount, not expenditures. <laughs> but, but similarly, just because something is budgeted, for correct, it doesn't necessarily mean we are in fact going to spend the money. I mean, for instance, we just uh, approved a payment to Visegrad. We did budget for that. But every time we make an actual payment, we approve it. So yes. I think it's sort of similar to that. It is. It's exactly so. It's exactly that. So to yeah. not get this problem, <coughs> we want to pre-approve any trustee expenditures so that we're all clear. But I believe that just to be clear, the wording in the policy is that they may request pre-approval. They don't have to. Yes. They don't can't have to. go and put in their so request. We don't have to. Sure what but but if you get pre-approval. What are we approving right now? We are approving the expenditure for the ALA conference. For the registration. For registration. For registration. For the registration fee. I would assume it would include if there were any uh, additional expenses, you know, parking or tolls or anything like it that. It says attend, right, we're going to have okay. a motion. So my, very, my question, though, is so far it's, it's for Linda, and a Patty and Karen and me. Anyone else want to go to ALA? I have a question. When is the deadline? March, April? What did you say? March, 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 March 14th. Which is before our next meeting, so that's why we're right. doing this now. All right. No, I don't know. Okay. Uh, you know, we can you can get one. Yeah, it's it's just, just like to get in there. Sure. No, I agree. Sure. So. I'm sorry. I'll be on a cruise. I'll be in a cruise. cruise. Oh, okay. Enjoy yourself. Okay, so, so, yes, that's coronavirus. <laughs> moving along. Moving along. <laughs> so the it is now. Do I hear a motion to approve the attendance? <laughs> of the no. Hello, everyone. Do it. Do I hear a motion to approve the attendance of Linda Ryan, Tim Spadoni, Karen Diamond, and Patty Rosansky at the American Library Association Conference in Chicago in June 2020? Somebody make the motion. So moved. Karen. Se second. Um, second. Great. Diane, please take the roll. Karen. Yes. Carolyn. Yes. Linda. Diane. Yes. Patty. Yes. Linda. Yes. Tim. Yes. Yes. Wow, wonderful. Okay. I will now entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, no, I have a motion. Oh, I'm sorry. We had other. Yes. I, I'm, I oh, thank you. Geez. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. I forgot about other. Do we have any other trustees? I know. This was a very long one. This is a good one. All right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Carolyn's got another. What do you got, Carolyn? Okay. Um, it's on the website. It's a board of trustees. And it says, to leave a voice message for the board, call 847-663-6650. I would like to request we eliminate that because each trustee has their own phone number and if a do? person, yes, yeah, right there, it's on your business card too. Because what's happening is this, somebody leaves a message here and then somebody else. No, it's forwarded automatically to your accounts. No, I told you it's not automatically forwarded. It says leave a message. But the message is automatically forwarded. Forwarded to your email account. Yeah. That's what you mean. Okay. But how was it forwarded? Yeah. Is it, oh, is that, you know, because I got an email that said something about a voice message, and I thought it was spam, yeah. and I no, oh, yeah, no, 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 that was a real But anyway, no, I, I'm, I'm not sure. sure. I got several of my See, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not sure about getting a general number, because below it, it says, board members, Tim Spadoni, president, and it has your website, and your phone number is 847-663-6651. But why would anybody want to call each and every one of you if they could just call one number to call all of you? If they want, I don't want to say something they, to all of you. See, I, I don't know that they want to call all of us. So you're but saying that number. So, so what I'm saying is 
asking is, you're saying that number is something that goes to all the board members, not just yeah. one person? Yeah. I mean, it goes to a, a box and For a box that just okay, pays to it. you. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't think it was that funny, but I guess right no, now I'm all. But anyway, I just wanted to understand this. All right, then I have a couple other questions. Um, I had requested the address and company name for Tony Whittington at our last board meeting. And there seemed to be some chaos with providing that information to me and I'm trying to understand when I'm in a meeting and I ask for something and I'm told I'm going to receive it, why would there be difficulty in me obtaining it when I send a reminder email? Hmm. And I want to thank you, Trustee Sedoni, for jumping in and saying, well, Carolyn did request this, send her that invoice. So I'm trying to figure out what's going That's on it. here. I asked you. I mean, I, I sent it to Tim. No, but so you refused to do it, to give me the information. I'm trying to figure out why. Wait, 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 hold on. Hold on. Refresh my memory. I sent the, that information to you, Tim, so that you could remind the entire board that it would not be appropriate for an individual board member to contact that person. That, I did say that. I didn't say it was contacting the person. I, I, asked, but I asked for a company name and an address of an individual who we were considering and it's to, to give us an inspection report, and nobody could locate this person. So what I'm trying to sit, what I'm asking is, as a trustee, when I ask for information, why do I have to go through this? Well, I guess it depends on the information. Yeah. Well, if you're if you're telling me that you contacted a person, not a company, uh -huh. who paid him third three thousand two hundred fifty dollars. Well, are you going to contact that person? No, I wanted to know the name of his company and where he was located. Because Tony signed his inspection report as Tony Whittington. <coughs> no letterhead, nothing. So the point was, I was told I was going to get the information, and then when I email as a reminder I didn't get it, I'm told I can't have it. And then my no, second... The, the, no. I did not say you couldn't have it. I said I was going to forward yes. it to Mr. Spadoni, who could have this. a conversation with you about I, how I, you were going to use the information. Blame me, Carolyn. Go ahead. Okay, and then the second blame one well, was let's, about... Let's finish on that. So, that was my fault for not passing mm -hmm. it along to you. Oh, no, that's or fine. I just wondered why it got caught up in the Carolyn, first place. Carolyn, that's terrible. Well, you did I seem to be a better president. Oh, please. Okay. <laughs> So now my other question was this purchase for copiers. Yes. Okay, and we've been around and around with this. We all sat here and listened to um, Rich. During yes. the presentation, he told us to go on the website and you could see or, or obtain the bids that were submitted for our two copiers. I mentioned at the meeting I could not access them on our website. The attachments didn't open. All I asked was somebody send me those attachments, meaning the administration. I also asked for a copy of the proposal that identified our request to purchase these two copiers because in this humongous document that's on the website, nowhere does it indicate that. And it doesn't even show the state of Illinois as part of this process. So it's very confusing. But I received my response. Well, I thought you were going to speak with. Did we say you were? I sent speak with an Richard? email and Susan responded, and she won't give me the information. I, I responded that you already had all. No, the I don't. I have, which is a different. No, thing. I have the document from the meeting. Nowhere in this proposal 3091, dated 2014, is that information. Why can't you just give me the specific information? It doesn't information? exist. That's not how that kind of proposal How works. did we submit a bid for two copiers? We didn't submit a bid for two copiers. We went to the pre-bid contract place yes. and fought, found their pre-bid contracts. They're the ones for that did the it. For the two copiers? For, no, for all copiers. For copiers, for uh, any number of different things, and he can go on and look for what matches what our needs are. So, so where they the did the bidding, we did not do right, the bidding. Right, but there are copies of bids that he looked at to determine he went with 
kind of a monopoly. Well, they're, they're, they're not big. They're not big. You didn't go after bids, Carol. We, so, we so definitely so explained this during no, the meeting. No, I'm not asking. I'm, I'm, I'm not so saying we went out for bids. I want to see. He did bids. I want. He, he went it. out on this site. Yes. For companies provide this information for what we want to purchase. I want to see the companies who submitted this pricing that he chose. So, so this, no, Carolyn, this organization. They do the job. They do the job. Okay. They get and they go out and find the best price for these copiers, right? Do so you understand there, that? So there aren't, he said there were bidders, on, there were quotes on the website that you could see the pricing. And those are those are the final quotes. For yeah. The, bid, the, the bidder that was selected, the best price. Right. So where are the? So we can't. So we can only see who submitted pricing. They tell us, and we just go with that one person. Yeah. If that's the way we decided to do it. Well, I'm asking you. Yes. Is that this, yes. That's not the. That's how the process works. That's not the explanation. Nah, he I absolutely did. did. I heard him, and he said it. You didn't understand it. He I said I could go on the site to get the the different prices. If I want, he said there were too many. That's why we didn't get the doc documentation. So I just wanted to see them. Well, so I did send you the link where you could go and browse what, everything that was available. I went on the site, and what I'm saying is, there's tons of information. Okay, well, there there is. Is. all I wanted to find was our information. Well, but we if don't you're saying our information. Their site has no information about us. Their site has information about their. So, so well, yeah, so I, so I know that. Yeah. I know that. Yeah, it's quotes. Yeah. Okay, so here's the point. The point then is there aren't numerous quotes, and then no. we picked one. They select one. Well, yes. then I misunderstood. Well, yes. that's what I'm trying to find out here. Wonderful. Good. Okay, yes. okay. It's like, but my other question is there were supposed to be uh, some attachments, and it said to open for pricing. But they didn't open. It just doesn't work. Is that it? Maybe. I mean, the link. The link. Didn't work for you? That I don't know. Bad All right, it's fine. Bad. Let it go. Well, now I understand. Great. Okay. Any other trustee have any other other? Okay. If there's no other other, then I will send a motion to adjourn the meeting. So, second. Great. Got it. Was Penny and Dan right? Karen and Dan. Karen. 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 They do. They women Get your women straight. Back, um, we went to alternate uh, insurance companies other than Blue Cross Blue Shield. Yeah. And what we got was uh, was some pretty fantastic pricing. And at the bottom of each bid sheet, it's uh, subject to underwriting. Right. So what that meant is that we had to go to each and every person who uh, got health insurance and had them basically fill out a medical history. Right. And when they filled out the medical history, and then it was submitted to, I can't remember who it was, but like United the Healthcare yes. or something like that, um, the pricing came back dramatically higher than what we're paying. Yes. And even, yeah. even today with, oh, with the Affordable Care Act? Yes, thank yeah. you. There um, is no benefit. Uh, I'd be happy to get that pricing for you again, but I can assure you it would be the same exercise. Um, I can tell you uh, that we have a plan that is considered to be what they call a grandfather. Right. And as long as we don't change the plan, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll have a pricing structure that is more favorable to us. Mm -hmm. To give you an example, if you got that plan off the rack without the grandfathered feature, mm -hmm. Um, we'd be paying much more, uh, and I got the, I, I think I have those numbers from last time. Mm -hmm. We'd be paying uh, much more for that insurance. So, you know, having a grandfathered plan with Blue Cross Blue Shield allows us to maximize the value of our health care spend. Um, mm -hmm. And then over the last few years, uh, we've been neutral or decreasing, uh, comparing, okay. comparing year over year. All right. So but I, I can give you anything that you want well, to do except for personal hit button information. I heard that um, some other um, agency <laughs> has <laughs> its grandfathered and they seem to think they could beat it. But um, I'm glad that you've already investigated it and it's not possible. But okay, it's subject to underwriting. Yeah, that's, those are the key numbers. Yeah. Okay, All great. Right. No, let's, take the, let's take the whole thing. Okay, Karen. Yes. Karen. 
Yes. 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 Yes.